last time Oregon and Colorado State met, the stands were rocking. It was the 1990 Freedom Bowl, and it was a thriller. Sean Burwell was a promising freshman, and Bill Musgrave a promising pro. But it was the Colorado State defense that denied the Ducks at the goal line on a two-point conversion for the victory, 32-31. From Fort Collins, Colorado, nestled against the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, it's college football. This afternoon, the Oregon Ducks open up their season as they take on the Colorado State University Rams. Hi, everybody. I'm Todd McKim, along with Ken Woody, and welcome once again to another year of Oregon football on Prime Sports Northwest. And it may seem like summer with 85-degree temperatures, but it's football time. Well, I can smell those hot dogs in the tailgates. It's got to be football season. You always had a nose for the food, didn't you? <laughs> This afternoon, we expect a good matchup between a team from the Pac-10 and the Western Athletic Conference. University of Oregon coach Rich Brooks in his 17th campaign. That is more seasons on the Oregon sideline than any other Oregon coach. And he probably has a little bit of the first game jitters. This is his first game as athletic director and head football coach. Meanwhile, for Colorado State, they have a new program, a new system, a new coach. Earl Bruce is gone. He took with him his Big Ten style of football. He's now a broadcaster back in the Big Ten country. And Sonny Lubick comes in, and here's a man that's had a lot of success throughout the years. Last year, the last four years, the defensive coordinator for Miami. Well, some may say Earl took uh, the Big Ten coach's attitude with him. Uh, Sonny Lubick is a, a, a player's coach. The players are really responding to his enthusiasm. They're really excited about this year. Well, let's talk about the new system that he has, particularly offensively. Last year with Earl Bruce, they ran the option power type of football. This year, more of a one-back set. Well, he brought the one-back uh, philosophy that uh, was made so famous at the University of Miami, and he brought along a little defensive expertise as well. Uh, Leonis Brown, junior fullback, rushed over 1,000 yards last year, including an 80-yard. He's got speed. And they've got a good wide receiver in Eric Olson, who sat out last year with a knee injury. The quarterback makes it all happen. Anthony Hill last year passed for over 1,600 yards, but he can also run the football, too. He ran for over 350 yards, and he's definitely a threat. The Ducks defensively have a unit that returns seven starters, including Romeo Bandison, considered one of the better defensive linemen in the conference. I've had a pro scout tell me they feel Bandison is the top nose guard in the United States top at his position. Jeremy Asher, the inside linebacker from uh, Tigard, uh, the new and improved Joe Farwell. Uh, improved in the sense that he weighs about 20 more pounds and should be more durable. He'll have to make a lot of the defensive calls and at the cornerback, Herman O'Berry, last year led the conference in interception. And not only was he uh, very skilled, he brings a kind of a mental attitude to that defense. He likes to mix it up. All right, let's take a look at the other side of the line of scrimmage. First of all, for the Oregon Ducks. They also returned seven starters offensively, including one of the all-time leading rushers in Oregon football history, Sean Burwell. Sean Burwell is a go-to guy. He's had the best uh, preseason that he's ever had. He's ready to go. Derek Deadweiler on the outside is an outstanding receiver who I've, I'm told once he has his hands on the ball is the most dangerous threat the Ducks have. And a quarterback for the third consecutive season, Danny O'Neill, the junior, passed for over 2,000 yards last season, one of only four Oregon quarterbacks in history to do that. O'Neill did a real nice job of coming to his own against pressure defense last year, and he feels that now is the time to move into the upper echelon of the Pac-10 quarterback. Well, Coach Brooks, in looking at Colorado State, said the thing he was most concerned about was the Rams' defense. They have some outstanding talent, primarily Brian Schneider, a great outside linebacker. Well, Schneider led the WAC conference in tackles last year, and he's complimented on the outside by Andre Strode, an outstanding cornerback. Rams gave up a lot of yards last year, but, uh, you know, they're, they're very tough on defense. And in the secondary, a great player, only a sophomore, outstanding first year, Greg Myers had six interceptions. And, you know, looking at his stats as a freshman and his, uh, his picture on the court there, it almost looks like uh, Eric Castle. Well, if he plays like Eric Castle does over his career, he's going to be a dandy, that's for sure. Keys to the game, first of all, for Colorado State. Well, Colorado State has got a new coach, a new system. It's going to be real important that they execute and try to minimize your mistakes. Obviously, you want to do that with anybody, but with a new system, there's going to be a lot of excitement. They're going to have to get that out of the, uh, their system early and play well. The second part of it is they want to hang in there. They'd like to have this game close. Going in the fourth quarter, the last seven games, 
Colorado State has not given up one point in the fourth quarter. They feel if they can make it go that long, they've got a chance to win. And meanwhile, for the Ducks, with that experience and also that big size, especially in the offensive line. Talking to an alum today, he said he cannot remember an Oregon offensive line any bigger than this, neither can I. Pac-10 should be a big, uh, physically dominant kind of team. The Ducks need to uh, put that out there today. And then, as a Pac-10 team, uh, tends once in a while to do against a team they might consider from a, a lesser league. they got to stay focused, avoid the mental mistakes. We saw a game two years ago uh, in Salt Lake City where the Ducks those same two keys were up on the board. They didn't do it, and the uh, youth came away with an upset win. Well, one of the goals this year for Oregon is to play 60 minutes. The Independence Bowl, they played about 35 and lost a 19-point lead. We'll see what happens this afternoon. The season opener from Fort Collins, Colorado. It's the Oregon Ducks and the Colorado State Rams. <laughs> Oregon has won the toss of the coin, elected to defer its decision until the second half, and so Colorado State will take the football. A slight breeze at the back of Tommy Thompson as the Ducks get ready to kick it off and start the 93 season. Remember, we are at 5,000 feet of altitude, and I know Tommy Thompson has a strong leg, but that one went through the end zone on the fly, and so the Rams will take over first and 10 at the 20-yard line. And we've already got a few uh, words being exchanged between the two teams. The special teams obviously trying to set the tone for this afternoon. Colorado State offensively will start Anthony Hill at quarterback, a 5'11", 193-pound junior from San Diego. Completed 48% of his passes a year ago for 1,669 yards. Ten touchdowns and three interceptions. Brown, Zeno, and so forth. A good offensive line. They returned four of five starters. The only newcomer is the center. Three wide receivers and a tight end. That's the basic formation for Colorado State. They'll hand it to the fullback. Brown, he slips across the 20 and gets maybe a yard, and that's it. The tackle by Ernest Jones, the All-American candidate, the outside linebacker position. Defensively for Oregon, Williams, Malapai, and Bannison. Malapai played only three downs last year, was injured in the opener against Hawaii, out with an elbow injury that uh, required surgery. The linebacking core, Jones, Tomo Payao, Massey, and Asher. Tomo Payao actually moved to the outside this year after playing the inside the first three years in the program. Second down and nine. Oregon with an extra defensive back. They go back once again, and Romeo Bannison is right there to stop the ball carrier, a gain of maybe one. So Oregon, the number one goal the new defensive coordinator had, uh, Nick Aliotti, was to stop the run. As we take a look at the secondary, Coda Walker getting the start in place of Alex Molden, who did make the trip, O'Berry and Jeff Sherman, the all Pac-10 academic selection. And Jeff is getting his first start of Pac-10 career. Third down and eight. We ride receivers for Colorado State. Ronald Antoine split to the top side of the screen. Olsen near side. And we have some movement. And the Ducks are pointing at the Rams as though they had moved first. Well, there's always some uh, opening game jitters. And you just saw an example of it right there. First penalty against the Rams under Earl Bruce's tenure. They were always pretty good in the penalty department, as have been the Ducks. Last year, the Rams penalized only about five and a half times a game, 50 yards. That's pretty good. So it'll be third and now long, about 13 yards. Oregon now with the six defensive backs as Eugene Jackson that checks into the ball game for Oregon. And it'll stay conservative with the draw on the ground and gain of about eight yards on the play, but it's well short of the first down. Bandison once again making the stop, and so the Rams will have to boot it away. There's an example. The penalty really hurt Colorado State. Had it not been for the penalty and they had the same uh, gain, they would have got enough for a first down. They spread the Ducks out with a three-wide re receiver formation with six defensive backs, and it's going to be soft in there, but they didn't get enough to get a first down. Ducks were very strong in third down defense last year. 26% third in the conference. 
You are looking at Brian Brown, who has returned from a knee injury to get back into play. And a great kick by Mike McGee into the wind that drives Brown back to the 30. Trying to get to the outside, and he doesn't do it. Nailed at the 27-yard line by Sean Moran. And he's a defensive end. So you look at Brian Brown. The Ducks will have their first possession, and when we come back, it'll be Oregon football at their own 27. <laughs> Oregon's first offensive possession of the season. Tailback is Burwell. The fullback is Shedrick. And they got a three-wide receiver look. Burwell has a nice hole. Great block by Eric Barnes and Burwell spins forward over the 40 to the 42 yard line with a free safety Greg Myers got some help from Andre Stroh. It's a gain of 16 and a first down for Oregon. Ducks have got a very similar rushing approach as they did last year in the Texas Tech game. That's the very same play that Burwell got a lot of yards last year on. So Eric Barnes, number 63, making a pivotal block to Free Burwell for big yardage. First down, the first one of the ball game. O'Neal, his first toss, and it's incomplete. Well short of the Deadweiler, who had fallen at the CSU 40. Uh, Sean Burwell, with that rush, has just come second place in all-time rushing statistics for the Ducks. Now all he has to catch is Derek Lavelle. He just passed Bobby Moore, Ahmad Rashad. Well, Burwell is going to set a lot of records this year. He's in the top 10 in four different major offensive categories. He has had a tremendous career, I'd like to cap it off with a 1,000-yard season, something he has not been able to attain. Back to Burwell right side. This time, there is nothing doing. A gain of about two on the play. And so it'll be third down and eight. A tackle by Sean Moran, defensive end. 6'3", 245-pound sophomore from Aurora, Colorado. The Ducks' offensive approach today is going to be one of trying to be patient, hammer away. Colorado State likes to play a lot of two-deep defense, and Coach Blotty was telling us last night that leaves the Rams a little thin on the off-tackle uh, positions on both sides of the formation. Burwell now split out as a slot back. O'Neal dump pass over the middle to Shedrick. One of his rare receptions. Shedrick has huge yardage inside the 40 to the 36-yard line and a first down for Oregon. Just a little dump pass, and Greg Myers had to make the stop once again from the free safety position. Well, this is an area that Juan Shedrick has really improved on. He was not much of a receiver last year. They didn't have a lot of confidence in him, nor did he in himself. Showed right there he's done a lot of work in the offseason. Wide receivers and tight on tight ends ran off their defenders leaving a back underneath big hole big gain very high percentage pass too for O'Neill Shedrick comes out looks like an equipment change Pulu Malapai a true freshman from Honolulu takes his spot as the fullback Malapai trying to get a block on Schneider Schneider uh, did a nice job of closing the hole finally making the stop was Kenya Ragsdale the inside middle linebacker for Colorado State you know Ken they switched the defense too and it might not seem like much 3-4 to a 4-3, but some guys have to play different positions, like Kenya Ragsdale. He moves from the outside to that all-important middle linebacker position. That's right. Uh, one of the linebackers has got probably twice as much responsibility on any given defense that he did last year. And until you get to it, that's a lot of pressure. Oregon dr first drive of the game, and they've moved the ball from their own 27. Whistle and some movement at the line of scrimmage. Big Steve Harden, the left tackle, might have be, been pulling back a little bit on that uh, pass protection stance and that's what it looks like it'll be well, getting back to the, the two deep defensive philosophy of Colorado State they are going to be given some things up and it really takes patience as a quarterback to pick away and coach Blotty was telling us last night it also takes a lot of patience for a play caller to just stick with it hammer away because they're getting a, a wide receiver in a slot on all their formations here and that requires a linebacker to come outside in this case number four on Burwell, but you're getting a run defender in a pass defense situation. Counter play to Shedrick, and not much doing there inside the 40 to the 38. Steve Hodge, a defensive tackle, 6'2", 262 junior from Zanesville, Ohio, made the stop. Of course, there's still a number of players from the 
Earl Bruce regime who were recruited out of the Midwest, Ohio, Illinois, Indiana area. Offensively for Oregon, you see O'Neill, Burwell, Shedrick, Deadweiler, Corey Murphy getting the start as a flanker, and Willie Tate, the outstanding tight end. Up front, that quintet averages 300 pounds. O'Neill to throw. Great protection over the middle. He's got a man, Corey Murphy, first down. Murphy to the 20-yard line where he's banged to the turf right there. But a big third down completion, Danny O'Neill to Corey Murphy for the first down. Vincent Booker made the stop. Ducks are doing a real nice job. They're splitting Burwell out in a slot and requiring uh, number four, Brian Schneider, their best run defender, to come out in a pass uh, defense mode. In this situation, they, they strung him out on the left side. Murphy came in from the right side. Big hole across the middle. Nice job being patient by Danny O'Neill. Big third down conversion. Ball at the 20. Give it to Shedrick. Trying to cut back against the grain. Gets maybe two to the 18-yard line. Sean Moran once again the stop for Colorado State. Well, the Ducks are now in a yard situation where they're probably not going to see a lot of zone defense, and I think that you're going to find it a little more difficult to run the football. Colorado State will probably play more man-to-man -man inside their own 20-yard line than they like to on the regular part of the football field. This is an area where Oregon was a little lax last year, getting the ball into the end zone as opposed to Tommy Thompson trying field goals. Counter play to Burwell, great defense there. Stunning and twisting up front by Colorado State and making the tackle is number 30, Garrett Sand, inside backer from San Diego. Great job of reaction by Sand. He was... Uh, Colorado State is playing their linebackers about five yards deep, but you're going to see him see those uh, linemen pull and step up and fill the hole. It's a great job by an inside linebacker. So another third down opportunity for Oregon. Ball is spotted at the 18. Third and a long eight. Fake the counter. O'Neill pressured, throws, and Willie Tate unable to haul it in. O'Neill is pounded to the turf as he released the football and so Colorado State holds and Tommy Thompson will come onto the field to attempt a field goal and a good opportunity right now Ken to talk about one of the changes in college football this year the hash marks have been moved in from the sidelines six additional feet from each sideline so the angles for the kickers won't be as severe as they were a year ago. That's right we can remember one game in particular where that was really a critical factor in the outcome Tommy Thompson Attempting a field goal late in the game against UCLA from really the worst possible angle, and it just missed to the left. Uh, this is, you know, this got to show kickers have got a pretty strong union, I think, to get those hash marks moved. 35-yard attempt, a good snap, and the hold is good. And Thompson with the strong leg, and he splits the uprights, and Oregon is on the board with its first offensive possession of the 93 season. Tommy Thompson with a 35-yard field goal, and with eight minutes remaining in the first quarter, it's the Ducks with the first points of the game. Welcome back to Hughes Stadium in Fort Collins, Colorado. The Oregon Ducks leading Colorado State 3-0 on a 35-yard field goal by Tommy Thompson. Great drive for the Ducks, 11 plays, 55 yards. Interesting, though, that once they got the first down around the 20, they kind of went back to a more conventional formation, and I think that uh, might have made it a little easier for Colorado State to defend what they were trying to do. But nevertheless, a good start for Oregon. They stopped Colorado State defensively. It was three and out, and then the offense took control for the three points. So Thompson to boot it off for the second time, and I'd be stunned if we uh, see a Colorado State kickoff return when the Ducks are going in this direction. I just don't think it's going to happen. Well, last time, he kicked it about 65 yards, 75 yards. That was about 85. I'd say 84. Remember the, one he, 84. remember the one last year at Washington State where the Ducks were penalized on the kickoff and he had to kick from his own 20 and put it in the opposing end zone? You know, Thompson has the ability as a kicker to make a play that can just, like you say, it stuns you, but it does a lot to your opponent, too. There you see the scoring drive. Ducks converting on a couple of third downs there. One big one from O'Neill to Corey Murphy to set up the field goal by Thompson. Anthony Hill, his second offensive possession, and they've run the ball all four plays. 
This one's going nowhere. Brown stopped behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of one. Gary Williams made the tackle, but it was John Tomo Payal with the initial penetration to foul things up. And we have an injured Ram down on the field. That's Mark Donnelly, a junior from Terre Haute, Indiana. You see on the replay, they try the draw on first down, and the Ducks are... I would say they sniffed that one out. Looked like a jailbreak. Rams have got a lot of players from the Indiana, Ohio era, area, and we're kind of wondering about that. And obviously, that's some of the influence of Earl Bruce and his recruiting connections. Lubeck has some interesting connections. He is coming from Miami, but it formerly had been in the Big Sky Conference. Uh, very successful assistant and head coach at Montana State. Won the Big Sky Championship one year. Coached at Stanford as a, with Jack Elway. And was an offensive coordinator here back in the early 80s. Build a roll, dump pass incomplete. Intended for the big tight end, Tim Tillman. Dante Lewis, a hard-hitting junior college transfer, playing safety. And I tell you, this guy has uh, really made an impression, not only in the coaching staff, but also with some of those offensive players in fall camp. He'll stick you. That's right. In the, in the spring, they said it was just a matter. It's a penalty on the Rams. Ineligible receiver downfield. But it was just a matter of time between, before Dante picked up the system and really started uh, being able to display his athletic skills. He can really move. And uh, that's something you always like in a free safety. Someone who can hit you, but also a uh, guy who's got a lot of speed. The Ducks have got two real good players in that position. Jeff Sherman's real smart and very physical player. Not as fast as Lewis, but yeah, that's a pretty good combination to have at this stage. Oregon declines the penalty, and that'll set up third down and a little more than 10 yards for the Rams. Olsen split out far side. Antoine nearside. And now they're going to put Brown in motion. Quarterback draw. Not a bad call if it was designed that way. Good pressure from the outside by Ernest Jones initially, and Hill had to keep the football. Jeremy Asher, the inside linebacker, sophomore from Tigard High School in Portland, made the stop, and so the Rams will be forced to boot it away again. Well, the Duck defense players are very aware that Hill is a threat, both on that kind of play, sprint out pass, and there's also a little bit of option in that uh, Colorado State game plan. McGee to boot it away, and once again, Brian Brown back at his own 40. Brian Brown returned a punt for a touchdown a couple of years ago against ASU. Wow, this is a boomer. A rocket job that Brown fields at the 28. Can't get to the outside and gets back to the 32-yard line. Great coverage by Colorado State. Again, Sean Moran, a defensive end down there on the special team. 6.41 to play in the first quarter. Oregon leading 3 to nothing. Tommy Thompson with a 35-yard field goal. The defense has been suffocating Colorado State, unable to do anything offensively in the first two possessions. You look at Sonny Lubick. Very personable man. Players really like him. He's a big contrast to uh, former head coach Earl Bruce, who got in a little bit of trouble with uh, assaulting his players, I guess is the way you'd describe it. Double tight end set this time. They give it to Burwell, tries to bounce to the outside. Gains about two over the 35-yard line. So the Ducks have gone to that two tight end alignment. Josh Wilcox, a redshirt freshman from Junction City High School, and also Willie Tate in there. Roy Williams made the start for Colorado State. One thing about Oregon, Ken, they'll give you a lot of formations and mix it up. Well, particularly at the beginning of the game, you want to see as many formations as possible and see how they're going to line up against you. Then go back and say, hey, this is the best formation for this play. This is the best for that. Ducks going with a two tight end approach right now. Deadweiler, the lone wide receiver. Rams showing blitz. Shedrick eludes one tackler at the line of scrimmage and gets about three. Greg Myers up from the free safety spot. We've called his name a lot already. Penalty flag down at the line of scrimmage. The Rams in their eagerness to attack the Ducks defensively may have been offside, and they are. Well, it really doesn't matter where Brian Schneider or Greg Myers line up. They're still going to be around the football when, in a, when the tackler, the ball carrier goes down. 
Defensively for the Rams, Moran, we've called his name on special teams already. They like Steve Norton, Steve Hodge, and Brady Smith. The key to Colorado State this year defensively, according to their people, is they've got to have good play out of the defensive ends. Schneider, Ragsdale, and Ingram was a big playmaker a year ago. And the secondary, you've heard all of those names called already. Well, the one thing about different about being a defensive end in an even scheme is that not only must you rush the passer, but you've got to keep contained. And in an odd man defense, oftentimes they have an outside linebacker who will take over that responsibility. Shedrick fighting for the first down. Fumble, ball is loose, but it is ruled to be dead right at the 43-yard line. That'll be close to the first down. Kenya Ragsdale made the stop. Another one of those guys from the state of Ohio, Akron, Ohio. Good job here, Shedrick, keeping his feet going. He's definitely stopped there. And look at Ragsdale trying to strip that ball free. A little bit like those old rub rugby scrums where the, the one guy hangs on the outside for the lateral. And so we'll have a measurement here. 5.23 to play first quarter. Oregon leading 3-0 in the season opener. Next week, the home opener against the Grizzlies of Montana, guided by former Oregon coach Don Reed. And you can see just inches shy. So it'll be third down and inches. Well, the armchair quarterbacks are saying, what do you do? Do you get the uh, sure thing, the first down, or do you maybe do a play-action pass here? What are you going to do, Todd? Well, if you have an offensive line that averages 300 pounds, I think you pick up your first down now but that's the luxury that you and I have up here well they're really happy keep uh, have Howington up there uh, as a center he weighs 325 pounds and there aren't many centers that are of the athletic ability that Howington is I mean, he weighs over 300 pounds and he can really move uh, he definitely puts a new oomph in the double team O'Neal on the sneak and he has the first down just Staying right behind Howington, and he blasts out about a yard and a half. Steve Hodge at the bottom of the stack for Colorado State. Oregon with the wind in the first quarter. A breeze that we would guess at 10 to 15 miles an hour. Beautiful sunny day just east of the Colorado Rocky Mountains. Temperature expected to be in the mid-80s sometime during the course of the day. And again, with the altitude, the conditioning will be important. The Ducks are perfect now on third down attempts. Or no, they're not. They're three out of four. They missed the one third down attempt uh, inside the 20. So three out of four, 75%. That's a good start. Well, the Ducks, by moving into this two tight end uh, scheme, look like they're going to assert their physical prowess and see if they can wear Colorado State down a little bit. Injury update on Mark Donnelly, the offensive tackle for Colorado State. Donnelly apparently has re-injured an ankle and is not expected back this afternoon. First down. Now the Ducks go back to that three wide receiver look. Here come the Rams on a blitz. O'Neal has time, throws, and it is caught by Deadweiler. Yes. He hauled it in despite the cohorts of the Rams fans on the near sideline. And Detweiler with his first reception. Nice job by O'Neal of standing in there. He knew there was a blitz. He brought Burwell back in there to protect. And it's very obvious when Colorado State is in man-to-man -man, uh, coverage as opposed to their traditional zone too deep look. O'Neal saw it. Burwell reacted, got enough protection to get the ball off. And man-to-man, -man, the Ducks have got to feel they've got a great chance. Deadweiler, the second leading receiver a year ago, would have been the number one receiver had he not broken a collarbone against Washington State and missed a couple of games. First down pass by O'Neal over the middle, wide open is Tate, and he likes to knock people over when he runs. How many guys will it take? And it finally took Steve Harden to knock him down, Oregon's <laughs> offensive tackle. Excuse me, that's Josh Wilcox. That's his first reception. In the old days, there was a penalty for trying to aid the runner. And, you know, this would be close to it. Wilcox with his first reception, the son of the former Oregon great and NFL star, Dave Wilcox. And that's great hustle by Harden down there. You can see that he's trying to <laughs> shake hands with Wilcox. Let's see. Colorado State was in man-to-man -man again, and O'Neal victimized them. They're trying to disguise their coverage a little bit. The Ducks are playing with one tight end, and they're splitting them out in the slot. 
And that still is Wilcox in there at the tight end position. They'll go back to the run with Burwell. And a great play, knifing in for the loss is Brian Schneider. And that's something he's done a lot throughout the course of his career. That's his 20th career tackle behind the line of scrimmage. And now we'll put the Ducks in a long yardage situation. Corey Murphy will check in for the Ducks now. You see Schneider, 6'1", 223 senior. Second team all Western Athletic Conference performer. He had 10 or more tackles in 11 out of the 12 games. You look at him in that pad on his neck there, he looks like uh, the hunchback in Notre Dame. O'Neal, might be a screen, it is. And they've set it up decently, although coming from his cornerback position is Andre Strode to break it up. But the Ducks get back the lost yardage and pick up about a yard more. So it'll be third down and about nine. Well, the center, Heath Howington, tried to get out in front of that screen and was just a little bit late. Ducked at it blocked pretty well, except for just the last defender. You're going to see a good block right there. And as you can see, uh, Howington was tripped up and really couldn't get out in front of Burwell. The Ducks like to run kind of these slip screens to Burwell down in the scoring zone. You recall last year against the Cougars, uh, two touchdowns, and uh, again against Arizona State. Burwell will go in motion near side. Shedrick, the lone back. Five-man rush, twisting and stunning. O'Neal will take off and try to run, and he's tripped up right at about the line of scrimmage by Sean Moran. So once again, Oregon gets inside the 30, but is unable to put it in the end zone, and Thompson trots on to the field. O'Neal might have thrown the ball to Shedrick, number 24 here. As you can see, he steps up. There's Shedrick, and he was in a little bit better position. I don't know if he could have got the first down, the good news is the ball's right in the middle for the field goal attempt. But O'Neill might have done a little bit better had he been able to flip the ball off to Shedrick there. So the ball is spotted at the 23-yard line, and Thompson will plant it down just inside the 30. So this will be a 29, 39-yard attempt. Thompson already connecting from 35. This one's up, and it's true. So Thompson, two for two. Oregon, two for two in scoring as far as offensive possessions are concerned. And with two minutes and 26 seconds remaining in the first quarter, it's Oregon six, Colorado State nothing. Sports Northwest is brought to you by Rainier Beer, the beer from here. Welcome back to Fort Collins, Colorado, as the Ducks have scored on two field goals by Tommy Thompson as he continues to move up the all-time Oregon charts as far as scoring is concerned. And now for the third time this afternoon, Thompson will be Kicking off. The best time of the game to go get a hot dog is when Thompson kicks off. Because nothing's going to happen but the ball go through the end zone. Well, this one, again, for the third time, goes through the end zone, <laughs> over the end line, and I think it went through the uprights. Man, Australian rules football, or... Uh, Maybe the CFL, you'd get uh, a point for that. Those guys in the white shirts have come out and put their hands there. <laughs> well, the Oregon defense has controlled play. Colorado State has attempted one pass. They have not had good field position. And the front seven for Oregon has, as you mentioned, Ken, to start the program, dominated the line of scrimmage. That's right. Colorado State has yet to get a first down. A penalty hurt them their first drive, but right now they... They've not had great field position. Oregon taking advantage of the win so far. Look over the middle and it's incomplete. Coverage by Jeff Sherman, but I think it was David Massey that did a nice job on the receiver of holding him up after he got downfield. That's Zeno. Well, Colorado State has got some problems in the wide receiver. You know, they, they lost Primus, who was a great player last year, caught 60 balls, uh, was an All-American candidate, and... Uh, they got a couple of two, 
two freshmen in there trying to carry the load today and they got a lot of pressure on them against a pretty experienced Oregon secondary. They come with a sweep to Brown. Chad Cota out there defensively, and he nails Brown for a loss of two. David Massey also coming in from that inside linebacker position. You get a chance on the outside, you see the tight end tackle, number 87 there. Romeo Bandis in 97, pardon me, but I mean, that's blatant holding. Coda made a real nice reaction to stop that for loss of a yard. Rams 0 for 2 on third down attempts. That kind of surprised me, Bandison playing on the outside like that, but they're going to try to move him around, take advantage of the weak links up front. Hill back to throw, over the middle, caught, but it's going to be short of the first down. Alex Molden on the coverage along with uh, Chad Cota, but it is short of the first down as Antoine hauled it in. Two yards shy, and so the Rams once again bring in the special teams. And that's just exactly what you want out of your defense. Give up a couple yards, but make them turn it over. It's been three and out three straight times for the Rams. Gives the Oregon defense a lot of time to, to rest. Mike McGee already has had a great day punting. 45 and 51. He's averaged 48 yards of boot. This one, another rocket job, but not as far as Derek Detweiler fumbles the football and it's recovered by Colorado State. That's Moran once again. He's been down there on special teams all day long. And so a concern that Rich Brooks had in the punting game, and that was the inability to hold on to the ball by Detweiler turns out to be the first turnover of the season. Well, not only is it a turnover, but you can see him just took his eyes off the ball. He was trying to get ready to run, but that's a 45-yard loss for the Oregon defense. This is the kind of thing in an opening game that, you know, Oregon had asserted a physical dominance. They've lost it temporarily. Let's see what the defense can do to get it back. Very critical part, particularly with Colorado State facing getting the uh, wind in this next quarter. Only 44 seconds remaining in the quarter. And the Rams have it on the Oregon 36. Play action pass to Hill. Look deep down over the middle intended for Olsen. It's incomplete. Good coverage on the play by Herman O'Berry. And Olsen saying, hey, he climbed back. And O'Berry is down. Well, first of all, O'Berry's contact came after the ball was there. It was not impeding Olsen's chance. You can see that that's, he just came down on him after the play actually was over, and that ball was so far over his head that you couldn't call a penalty anyway. See what he hurts here. He's going to come down on that left ankle, it looks like. Rolled over on it. You don't like to see that with really the spiritual leader of your secondary. Not only a great player, but a real motivator and leader for the Ducks. They're looking at the ankle. Left ankle. And Alex Molden has checked in to replace O'Berry. Molden coming off major reconstructive knee surgery. The injury suffered in the Independence Bowl. He's had a remarkable recovery, but now he's going to be pressed into first line duty. Well, he just got in a scrimmage last week as an afterthought. His progress had been so good, they said, let's go ahead and give him a little action. They Nick Aliotti told me they expected him to play today. They didn't expect maybe to play him this soon, but... Well, there's a look of Molden, one of three Oregon players from the state of Colorado, and they are going to take Herman O'Berry right into the locker room. The locker room is at that end of the field, and you see Herman O'Berry... The number one interceptor in the Pac-10, eighth in the country a year ago, and that's a big loss for Oregon. It'll be second down for the Rams, second and ten as they went for the home run ball. Now the Rams go to a two tight end alignment, first time we've seen that from them. Hill will roll out, will get away from the containment. Has a first down, the first of the game for Colorado State. And he's inside the 25 before Chad Cota could knock him out of bounds. John Tomo Piao 
failed to contain the quarterback, and that opened up a big running alley. Well, Coda did a really nice job of kind of hanging out there and forcing Hill to turn inside. You're going to see him in the bottom part of your screen here in a second. You're going to see Coda. There he is, just to making him turn in, but there's no linebackers. The linebackers are gone. They got sucked up on that run fake. Toma Piao, normally an inside linebacker, has moved to the outside, so it's an adjustment for him as well. First down for the Rams, 21-yard line. Stay with the two tight ends. And this time they'll give it to Brown. He tries the left side. Good job by Jeremy Asher, fighting off the block, making the tackle with support help from Dante Lewis. Excellent job there by the linebacker, Asher. And again, Coda had come up to turn it inside, and that's just the way you want it. The outside uh, contain man turns the run in to the inside linebackers and make the play. And that's not a, a puny tight end he's taken on. Mark Smith, the tight end, is 6'6", 230, and Asher making the stop. That's the end of the first quarter of play. Oregon leading Colorado State, but the Rams on the move. A gorgeous day here in Fort Collins, Colorado. The season opener, Ducks and the Rams. Oregon with the lead, but the Rams have the ball second and nine at the Oregon 21. Brown in motion. Brown trying to lose traffic, just dumps it. Pretty smart play, good pressure by Gary Williams. That Oregon front four is pretty good. They also sent a linebacker, David Massey. Well, that's one of the disadvantages Colorado State has in spreading their formation. They also spread their interior line protection, and the Ducks have got three people up front, Bandison, Malapiehe, and Williams, all who are very difficult to block one-on-one. -on -one. You throw Ernest Jones into the mix. <laughs> Pretty well, he, good pass rush. Yeah, he's, he's impossible one-on-one. -on -one. So now it's third down. Both offenses have stalled right around the 20-yard line when they've had these opportunities. Eight-man rush, dump screen to Olsen, and a super job by the corner or the safety over there, Dante Lewis. If he doesn't make that tackle, it could have been a touchdown. Well, Gary Williams also took a hard left and pursued, too, and that's a pretty impressive thing to put pressure on a quarterback on a screen. You're going to see him, 54 is right there on the right side of your screen. Ball is thrown, and he's going to take off. Malapier is there too. So a field goal attempt by Mike McGee. They'll spot it at the 23, a 33-yard field goal, angle left. Almost off sides by Oregon. This one's up and McGee knocks it through. So it's been a day for the kickers. Thompson with two field goals and McGee with one. And the Rams have cut into Oregon's lead. It's seven, uh, six to three with 14-12 to play in the second quarter. This is Oregon Ducks football on Prime Sports Northwest. Been a bit day for the defenses and special teams so far, and we do not have any touchdowns, but three field goals as the Ducks lead it six to three. Early moments of the second quarter. Nice job by the Oregon defense of uh, coming in after a sudden change and. There's Deadweiler, drops it again. And this will be a touchback. So put it out to the 20-yard line. So Derek having a rough time. Made a great reception on a difficult catch. And now has struggled a little bit with the kick and also the punt. Well, you can see the lineman there just telling him to hang in there. They believe in him. And at this stage, he's got to... Ducks want, to, want him to get his hands on the ball. Like they say, he's the most dangerous uh, runner on the team. They just uh, want him to hold on to it when he does get his hands on it. Personally, I think it's a lot tougher catching a post pattern across the middle than it is a punt, but sometimes you hear those footsteps and it takes your yeah. concentration off of it. Yeah. In the first quarter, the, Oregon's had racked, uh, the Oregon Ducks racked up 100 yards of uh, total offense. Six first downs to only one for Colorado State. Uh -huh. O'Neal pass, a nice sidearm job to get it out to Shedrick. So Shedrick, with two receptions early in the ball game, has a first down and a gain of 13 yards. 
All right. Yeah, all right, we'll call him board. Tackle by Roy Williams, the strong safety. Let's take a look at the scoring drive for Colorado State. Keep in mind, after the Oregon fumble on the punt, six plays, only 20 yards, a minute and a half. And most of that yardage came on a keeper by the quarterback. O'Neal looks very sharp right now. He's getting the ball off quickly, and there's no indecision. He knows exactly what he's doing out there. Yo, hand it off to Burwell. Nice cutting move over the 40. Burwell on the 45, hit from behind, and falls forward to the 49-yard line. Kenya Ragsdale and Greg Myers stop him. But it's another first down for Oregon, and a gain of 16. Key block out there by number 90, Josh Wilcox. He's being split out in the uh, slot in the formation. That's what you want to try to do, is get one of your inside receivers split out, make the linebacker come out. That makes it a little softer out there for run support. Wilcox in motion, and he's played extensively this afternoon. O'Neal, Shedrick with his third reception. A good shield block by Wilcox, and another first down. A gain of 13, Roy Williams to stop for CSU. And Get another look at this play here. This is the same play the Ducks completed two plays ago, and it's just as open. You see 98 coming in to rush there. He should be out there on Shedrick. Rams find themselves one defender short, and Wilcox, although he didn't knock anybody down, as you say, Todd, he shielded a defender off. Shedrick caught three balls so far. That's, I think, maybe as many or more than the entire last season. Third consecutive first down for the Ducks as they move into CSU territory. We go back to the fullback, Shedrick, and he's the workhorse so far. Ryan Schneider the stop, a gain of two. Well, I would say that the Ducks are clearly on the road to establishing their, their primary goal, which is to establish physical superiority. You mentioned Shedrick. And last year, he had a total of two receptions for 20 yards. So he's ellipsed that mark already. We're going to have to give him a new jersey number, like single digits or in the tens, teens. <laughs> well, that, I think we all had that feeling after the spring game that Oregon's offense here had dimensions that we were seeing that they didn't have in the last two years. And right now, that's just the way it looks. O'Neal, play action, fires. Cut by Corey Murphy. Nice move at the 20. Bang down at the 18-yard line. Corey Murphy with his second reception. Vincent Booker made the stop. Danny O'Neill looks sharp this afternoon. Much stronger this season. Had a very good off-season conditioning program. And he's been on the mark. O'Neill is really mixing it up. Good play action fake in the middle. Opens up the hook zone outside. Corey Murphy, excellent job. Six different receivers have caught balls for the Ducks so far today. Danny O'Neill, 8 out of 10 for 123 yards. And for the third time today, Oregon is inside the Colorado State 20-yard line. O'Neill fires it out, and how did he see Sean Burwell there? But Burwell has the reception and is knocked out at the 3-yard line. Well, you talk about Danny O'Neill in years past, maybe not seeing the entire field or knowing where everything was, but he knew where Sean Burwell was and at the last minute gunned it out to him. I don't know if he did this as an afterthought or not, but when Burwell went in motion, nobody went with him. Right the last second, O'Neill had looked off uh, number 98 there and then threw it back to Shedrick. That's a great job of picking up the open receiver. Now, whether he was looking that defender off or just suddenly caught him by accident, it doesn't really matter. Nice job by the Ducks, though, of defending on that weak side. But four rushers were coming to the side of only three, three blockers. This is Murphy in motion. They'll give it to Burwell, and he is lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe lost a yard. Schneider once again, as he makes the stop along with Andre Strode. And here's Herman O'Berry. You see they got the boot on to prevent swelling. And let's hope that it's only a sprain. Well, Jeff Sherman just asked him uh, what was wrong there. If our mic had been a little more powerful, we might have heard O'Berry's reply, but I'd say that's a good sign of him coming out because if he were real serious, they'd probably keep him in the locker room. and Fake the counter. O'Neal throw incomplete. 
Maybe had a little bit too much mustard on that one because Shedrick was wide open in the end zone. Ducks have done a real nice job of faking play action and getting their fullback out in the route. O'Neill kind of forced that ball a little bit here. It's like, uh, you know, he's so open. But yeah, that's definitely a fairly hard throw, but you'd like to make that catch. So it'll be third down at the four-yard line. The Colorado State defense has been bending, 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 but they haven't broken yet. Yeah, those kind of balls, you'd like to hit them right in the chest area so they don't have to reach for the ball. And right there, it really appeared to bother Shedrick. O'Neill over the middle. It's almost intercepted into double coverage. And the Rams, a nice job defensively in the secondary. Booker broke up. And so, once again, the Ducks just can't get it in the end zone. And Coach Brooks disappointed in that. First down and goal at the three. And they had a touchdown. They just couldn't play throw and catch. And this one, precariously close. Maybe should have been intercepted by Booker. Yeah. He was sitting right there. Really, first, first mental mistake by O'Neill of throwing the ball in there. I don't think he saw that defender coming from his right side. But still... You know, that's the one thing about football. You don't get any credit at all for the yards you make. That was a tremendous drive by the Ducks. On the other hand, they may be wearing Colorado State down. We'll see. Thompson to attempt his third field goal. This one a 21-yard attempt. The kick is up, and Thompson is now 3-for-3. Three three. Last year, number three was the Pac-10 Special Teams Player of the Week three times. So threes are wild with Tommy Thompson. And the Ducks have their six-point lead back again. More college football comes your way tomorrow at 7 p.m. as the Stephen F. Austin University team plays host to the Idaho Vandals. Now, the Vandals last year, the Big Sky Conference co-champions, feature that wide-open offense led by quarterback Doug Neusmeyer, one of the best in the country, and tailback, Sheridan May. Join the action tomorrow at 7 on Prime Sports Northwest. Todd McKim along with Ken Woody at Fort Collins, Colorado and Tommy Thompson has been the man of the day for the Oregon Ducks. 3 for 3 in the field goal department from 35, 39 and 21 yards and the Ducks lead 9 to 3. For the first time today, Thompson will be kicking into the wind. This one is high, but short. Fielded at the five. Oh, my goodness. Good night, sweet prince. Dan Mead, number 30. And I tell you, he laid a big old lick on Leonis Brown. Number 30, a reserve fullback from Auburn, Washington. Leonis Brown is right out there. Where did the wedge go? The only wedge that was out there was the Oregon wedge that hit him. That was a great hit. How many times do we see the Oregon uh, defense actually have to cover a kickoff? Now, that's big-time coverage. Boom! Whoa! Better check your fillings on that one. Once again, poor field position for the Rams. Trip set near side. Here's Brown trying to make it to the corner, and uh-uh, no way. Alex Molden came up quickly. A loss of three. Wide receiver tried to block Molden on that play, and he was going to have nothing to do with that. You know, the thing about Oregon's defensive backs, they're not real big. They, they run very well and they're physical. I mean, they are good tacklers. They're aggressive guys. They kind of like that confrontation. See, Molden, nice job. No one's going to go around his end. The Ducks tradition have been very sound in the secondary. You know, Nick Aliotti has just taken over the reins this year. Um, I mean, you know, if Oregon fans are worried that there's going to be a fall off right now, those guys look pretty well coached, pretty sharp so far. throw. He's in trouble. Jump pass. Caught. For about four yards. The reception made by Ronald Antoine. Isaac Walker, a young man you will hear a lot about in future years for the Ducks, made the stop. 5'11", 180 pound sophomore from Los Angeles. Had a tremendous spring filling in for Molden. Well, Hill wants to throw to his right. and The reason he does is there was someone coming wide open across the middle. There was a mix-up between Molden and Sherman on the coverage, but he was unable to get the football off, and he was instead forced to throw to his left. But I'll tell you what, the Ducks were going to give up about an 80-yard play unless somebody could catch... Uh, see, it was... Uh, 
0 for 4, third down conversions for Colorado State. Duck showed blitz, here comes Ernest Jones backside. Hill throws it, the ball is incomplete. In and out of the hands of Eric Olson on the far sideline, Molden on the coverage, and so once again the Rams come up short on a third down attempt. Well, Eric Olson was the receiver who was wide open across the middle to play previous. This time he's taken a deep route. Does a nice job, he's open, but that ball is thrown just a little bit too far outside. And had he made the catch, he would have still been out of bounds. McGee to come in to attempt his fourth punt. And he's been the Rams MVP so far. You can see Brian Brown now back in at the single safety position. Deadweiler, not back there. So now McGee will have the wind at his back. The Ducks with 10 men at the line of scrimmage. They're gonna fall back. And another, wow, this is unbelievable. This might end, end, end up in the end zone. And Brian Brown is going to hope that it goes in, and it will not. It'll be marked at the one-yard line. I think Brian Brown forgot that he was playing on natural grass and not artificial surface. Exactly. That first kick of the ball, it took it towards the goal line, but the ball was kind of leaning to the left. A 79-yard punt by McGee. Well, Two tremendous kickers uh, displaying their talents this afternoon. The Ducks had a 76-yarder from Tommy Thompson last year in the Cal game, and it turned the whole game around. It, as a coach, I don't know if you can fault Brown for this. Well, that guy actually made a bad move there in, in trying to touch that ball because it right. wasn't going anywhere. And the worst thing he could have done was batted it into the end zone if you're a CSU fan. Yeah. So now the Ducks pinned against their own goal line. They'll give it to Shedrick, first man through. And the big offensive line trying to wedge forward. And Shedrick will squeeze out about two yards. Schneider and Ragsdale on the stop. We're talking about the Cal game last year and Thompson, how he ignited the crowd, ignited the defense with a 76-yarder. That crowd right now is pretty fired up. And it's up to the Oregon offense to make sure that that's not a pivotal play in this uh, first half. First time the Ducks have been inside their side of the 20 yard line to start a drive. I didn't know that I didn't know that Isaac was in the Falcon anymore because normally he's the Falcon. Murphy in motion. O'Neill to pass from his own end zone. Look out. He's nailed, but he gets the ball loose. Wilcox fumbles. Ragsdale picks it up. Ragsdale at the three, and that's the second turnover of the game for Oregon. And Josh Wilcox forgot one thing, and that's take the football with you. Second turnover of the day for the Ducks. Both of them deep in their own territory. And this is very similar to the, the plays they've been running earlier in the first quarter. O'Neill gets a little pressure, gets the ball off. And that ball is certainly catchable, but trying to tuck it away and run with the ball, the sophomore. Ragsdale made the recovery. And now CSU with an opportunity to take the lead. Big defensive stand necessary here by Oregon. Colorado State's offense has done nothing this afternoon, but it's been their defense and special teams that have kept them in the ball game, and that's what we talked about. Sonny Lubick that's right. just wanted to be hanging around in the fourth quarter, and right now his team doing just that. Brown trying to cut back. He gets down to the one-yard line, and that's it. Interior of the Oregon defense stuffing him up right there, including Ernest Jones. Into the ball game this afternoon for Brown. He's really been limited in his uh, rushing attempts. They've done a nice job on him, but when you got the ball down at the one yard line, it's uh, tough to keep them out of the end zone. Yep. Oregon will take out Alex Molden, bring in an additional down lineman. Van Ward and he did not get into the end zone. He's about six inches away. Jones and Tomo Piao, the two outside backers. Well, Colorado State is going to have a hard time running straight ahead against the Ducks. They've got a bigger defensive line. Those outside linebackers, inside linebackers can defend the run very well. Good job by surge by the Ducks, you see. There's no pen there's some pretty good penetration on the right side. Jones, Massey there, far I almost said Farwell, Jeremy Asher in the backfield. The big play right here. 
Hill likes to run some option, too. They're going to pound it once again, and here comes Hill all alone outside containment. And a touchdown for the Rams. Well, you called it, Todd. It's actually not really an option play because there was nobody to pitch the ball to, but you know that's real difficult for the defense. you got to play the run inside. You have to. That's percentages, and you just hope that if it's going to come outside that somebody can react quick enough in a case like that. The Ducks had sold out to the run. Tony Hill gets it in the end zone. So with the point after, the Rams can take their first lead of the game. 6.38 to play. You see just the keeper, Asher, took the fullback. Jones left out in space. Convincing fake by that running back, too. And that ball is no good. That kick is no good. So we had uh, praised Mike McGee for his punting efforts and his field goal and fails to give Colorado State the lead. So with 6.38 to play in the second quarter, we are all tied up at 9-9. Well, Oregon coach Rich Brooks has uh, his hands full with Colorado State, the fired-up squad. It's been two costly Oregon fumbles that have given Colorado State two scoring opportunities, and they have capitalized with a field goal and a touchdown. Oregon, meanwhile, has had numerous opportunities inside the 20 and has come away with only nine points. Kickoff by McGee, and it's into the... Uh, excuse me, that's not McGee, that's uh, Napier. He's the kickoff man. McGee, by the way... That 79-yard punt was the second longest punt in Colorado State history. Take a look at the scoring drive. Three plays, three yards. One-yard touchdown run by Anthony Hill. Well, you mentioned the turnovers there. Not only did they get points, but, I mean, they got easy yards. That's got to be the most frustrating thing. Oregon has totally dominated the game up front. You know, they've, they've inside the 20-yard lines, they've been moving up and down the field. Took four series for... Colorado State to get their first first down. There's no way they should be in this game, but yet they are, and they should actually be ahead. O'Neal. And he's going to throw this one in to the sidelines. Uh, all his receivers recovered. He wanted to go to a quick out pattern to Deadweiler, but he was not open and then just got rid of the football. One thing that Danny O'Neal uh, did last year that hurt Oregon, and Danny would be the first to admit this, is that on first down passing situations, you know, he'd take a sack or make a big mistake, and you'd be in second and 20 instead of second and 10. And so it's one thing to make a bad mistake. It's another thing to make a mistake that's really going to cost you on the entire series. Yeah, it's, it's one thing to lose it down, but yardage, too, that's uh, insult to injury. Drop play to Burwell, trying to go outside, now inside, puts his head down and runs into Kenya Ragsdale and gains three. Well, the one thing about the Ducks' offensive line last year uh, 47 sacks uh, the Ducks gave up, but in 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 uh, fairness to the offensive line, some of those were sacks where O'Neal held on to the ball or was indecisive, and that's one thing they worked on a lot this spring. And you know, really up till this last series, O'Neal has been very sharp. But that throw in the end zone, shaky decision. Right now, uh, Colorado State is playing inspired, and it's up to the Duck offense to reestablish the momentum they had uh, generated. Movement, and we have penalty flags. Somebody on that left side of the Oregon offense might have budged. It might have been hardened again, but we'll wait for the official announcement. So, bud. That's right, he's... Well, you know, we talked about the Ducks staying focused. Uh, illegal procedure. That's... Well, it's both the... Uh, Howington, I believe, and Harden. Yeah, both the left tackle and left guard thought the ball was going to be snapped. It almost looked like O'Neal flinched a little bit, too. Well, now the Ducks in third and long, third and 12. See if Colorado State plays his zone coverage or comes after the Ducks. Four-man rush. Backside pressure. O'Neal down. Sack. And it's all Rams right now. Steve Norton and Brady Smith. Get the first sack of O'Neal, and now Tommy Thompson's going to have to boot it away from his own end zone. And I tell you what, you mentioned it, that punt 
by McGee really fired up this Rams team. That's right, and this Colorado State defensive line doesn't look like they're being manhandled at all. Steve Norton, number 96, we've seen him all over the field. Right now, the Ducks a uh, little bit disorganized and disheartened. Greg Myers is back, single safety at his own 45-yard line. Ducks converted their first three third-down conversions. They're now 0 for 4, 3 out of 7 for the game. First punt of the day for Thompson. Myers last year averaged over 11 yards of return, was among the national leaders in punt returns. Thompson, spiraling kick. Myers will drop back to his own 40. Tries near side. He's got good speed, reverses his field, and is knocked down at midfield on a good solid tackle by Jeff Sherman. 10-yard return for Myers. And so the Rams with their offense coming onto the field. Great field position. Well, you can see the, the Rams are going to have great field position. They've got the wind with them. I'll tell you that the fumble by Deadweiler was really critical because it happened right before the end of the quarter. The Ducks were going to uh, you know, run that, that quarter out. Not only did they get the ball, but they got the advantage of the wind. 432 remaining in the second quarter. First quarter dominated by Oregon, leading six to nothing. And the second quarter, the Rams, defense and special teams have done the uh, business. Hill with a big hole. Hill with an elusive run as he's got the first down inside the 40. David Massey knocked him down, but you can see the elusivity of Hill. You have to keep a man on him and keep your eye on him because he can tuck it and run. Well, that physical superiority, it looks like it's a product of kind of a mental attitude. The Ducks were just having their way with Colorado State up front. Right now, they can't block them, and they can't close the hole very well either. First down, Ram. The clock continues to run. Brown, the lone back. Hill to throw. Hill deep down over the middle. This ball is caught. Perfect throw by Hill. Alex Bolden on the coverage, but Olsen, who couldn't haul one in moments ago, does right there. Ducks brought some pressure, but the pressure came late on the right side. You can see the interior did a nice job at defending. Here's a great catch across the middle. Defensive back cannot cover a receiver really more close, closely than that without committing an interference. But Hill, you know, was off to a shaky start. Now he looks real sharp. Well, they have not been able to run the ball, but... The threat of the run has certainly opened some lanes. Now they'll go back to the run with Brown. He hurdles over the top and gets two. Ernest Jones in there. Jeremy Asher stacking things up. In this situation, Ken, I would think the Rams would like to take as much time as possible, winding down to the three-and-a-half-minute mark of the quarter, use up a lot of that clock, and uh, you get a touchdown or a field goal, but uh, not give Oregon much a chance to... Move the ball. You know, two ways to look at it. One, you know, use up the clock, don't get Oregon a chance. Another one is let's score, kick it off with the wind, and use our, uh, you know, kind of our mental edge right now and see if we can get one more shot at scoring. Hill. Again, over the middle, this ball is incomplete. Penalty flag thrown in the middle of the Colorado State offensive line. Right now, Hill is 4 for 10 for 38 yards. Every one of those uh, completions has been a big one. He's carried the ball for 28 yards. Again, Colorado State has not generated a lot of yardage. Most of the yardage has come via Oregon turnovers. Well, Oregon with a decision here. It looks like a 10-yard penalty against Colorado State, or maybe more if it's holding it behind the line of scrimmage. Take that and make it second and long, or make third down in about eight, and they'll take the penalty. See the holding on the right side here, number 64 is trying to choke the rusher there. You get your hands up in the face mask area of someone, they're gonna call that one every time. Interesting decision by Coach Brooks, but this gives the Oregon defense a little more chance to work with, and you know, Colorado State is still one for six. Third down, it's not third down yet, but you gotta feel you got a chance to maybe get a turnover. Oregon showing pressure. Screen pass and a great job by Jeremy Asher. He had a bear hug on Brown in the backfield and the, the pass uh, never had any chance to go to Brown. Line judge did not get a chance to see that very well. If he had, he would have called holding 
on Asher. He was holding him all the way. So now it's third down and long. And if the Rams would have to kick a field goal from here, it'd be about a 47-yarder. Of course, you know the thing Jeremy would say is, Coach, I, I, that guy looked like he was trying to block me, so I was trying to keep him away from me. So there's a little bit of that on those play-action screen plays. We have a timeout for Colorado State. They want to think this third down and long play over. 3-0-1 to play in the second quarter. Colorado State, one for six, third down conversions. The other thing that... Coach Brooks may have uh, had in the back of his mind is that uh, the Colorado State kicker has just shanked an extra point. So if even if they get a field goal try, you know, let's try to get him back a little bit more and uh, play with his mind a little bit. Both Oregon turnovers today have been, I think you'd have to call them unforced. Uh, one is a, a punt that was simply dropped. The second one was a completed pass, switching the ball one hand to the other. Not, not like it's a hit and a fumble. Sure. So just, uh, we talked about mental focus and uh, the concentration level. And that's hurt Oregon this afternoon. Well, you know, if you're going to lose your concentration, I'm not sure there's a place to lose your concentration. But here you see Asher down in the left-hand corner. Yes, he's, he's definitely holding there. Of course, he isn't now, and that's probably when the official looked over there. But like I say, it's difficult sometimes for a, defend, a defender to, you know, just uh, keep his hands off of somebody who's right up against him. You know, you got to try to protect him and keep some distance, try to control him. Three wide receivers split to the right for Colorado State, including the far man, Paul Turner. And he's a real speed burner. Now they go unbalanced line. And here comes the blitz. And Hill gets away from Chad Cota. Hill will throw it. Incomplete. Intercepted but out of bounds. Coda missed an opportunity to force Colorado State into a punting situation. Now, instead, it looks like they'll probably attempt the field goal. Nice job by Eugene Jackson. Not only did he push the receiver out of bounds, but the ball was deflected and he picked it off. Good pressure inside here. and you, you, That's just great athletic ability by Hill. He cannot, he's got too much yardage to go to run the football. There's another advantage to taking that penalty. Put him back to the position where he had to throw the football. McGee to try his second field goal of the afternoon. This one's way left. And we have a penalty flag in the middle of the line of scrimmage. That ball never had a chance. And we'll check out the penalty call as well. CSU and so Oregon will take over. Well now the coin has been flipped. Now there's 247 to go in the quarter. And Oregon with an opportunity in that decent field position. Maybe to do something. Well, and although this score may end up being tied, it's just amazing the dramatic shift in the emotion of both teams right now. He's gonna hook this ball to the left anyway. Never had a chance. And I don't think it was deflected there, but that was just a over the top pull. Nice job by the Oregon defense, and the offense has got a couple minutes to work with here. Kristen McLemore in the game, split to the top of the screen. Murphy and then Josh Wilcox in the slant. There's Burwell, big hole. Burwell, 40. Burwell, 43 yard line. First down, clock stopped. Greg Myers made a sure tackle on Burwell, or he would have gone a lot farther. Well, this is as good as a completed pass. Doesn't take Sean Burwell very fast, to very long to run 14 yards. One thing about the gets the two deep, you want to spread them out and run it in that off tackle area, just where Burwell ran the football. They'll go the same play. The result not the same. A gain of two out to the 45-yard line. Steve Hodge, defensive tackle, made the stop and timeout Oregon with 2.12 to play in the first half. Game is tied at 9-9. And we've seen a little bit of everything so far in the game, Ken, as you would expect in the first game, some jitters. And a little surprising that uh, some of the mistakes made by the Oregon people from the, the veterans. You think about uh, the Deadweiler drop. Brian Brown uh, probably should have fielded a, a punt that ended up rolling down at the one and indirectly led to a touchdown for Colorado State. But these things happen in first games, and 
Brian Brown, of course, hasn't played since last year when he was injured in that Hawaii game. Well, you know, I cannot, I have not seen a glaring execution error by anybody. You know, offense, defense, kicking game. If the errors have come in terms of judgment or concentration. This is all part of being focused. I'm sure Coach Brooks is going to bring that up to him in the, in the locker room. Ducks really should be ahead 17 to nothing. Danny O'Neill is 11 out of 15 for 138 yards. Burwell with 47 yards rushing on 11 carries. They've done a nice job between the 20. And now would like to break through and put it into the end zone. The Colorado State has got to make a choice. Are we going to defend the formation, play our two deep, or are we going to have to try to stop the run inside? O'Neill has some room to run. Schneider in pursuit. O'Neill has the first down and is bumped out of bounds by Vincent Booker. Or excuse me, Andre Strode. Heady play by O'Neill. Has the presence of mind to get outside where there's fewer tacklers. He sees where the first down is and uh, gets the first down and stops the clock. Nice play of stepping up. As you can see, he's not indecisive at all about what to do. And there's that Brian Schneider. He's everywhere. I'd, you know, I'd find where he is and then take a left or a right. <laughs> you see Oregon with two timeouts remaining. And with over two minutes left to go in the half. Well, one thing, uh, in terms of a field goal, the Ducks are probably going to need a little more yardage than they normally would use because there's a fairly stiff breeze coming from our right to left. O'Neill on a half roll. Ball is caught by Murphy, out of bounds. Gain of eight to the 37-yard line. Corey Murphy won that starting job in the fall. He had a very good fall camp. They had two major scrimmages. He had four receptions in each one of those. And this is a young man out of a Benson High School in Portland who's got great athletic ability, and now he's showing some toughness as well. And Danny O'Neill, like a buffet line. A little bit of everything. <laughs> you know a lot about buffets, yeah, Scott. <laughs> Second down and two. O'Neill. Plenty of time. Lost it near sideline for Josh Wilcox. And he and the defender get the, their legs mixed up. Andre Strode and it falls incomplete. Now it'll be third and about two. Well, second and two, the Ducks came out in a three wide receiver formation, or three split men. Colorado State was playing the formation. They were going to give up the run inside. That's why there was nobody open. Second and two, I think you can probably take that chance on offense. Now they'll come out in a similar formation. Let's see if they keep it on the ground. Colorado State, a little defensive look uh, change. They go to a five-man, and once again, the left side of the offensive line. Hasty, and that changes the situation completely. You go from second and one and a half, or third and one and a half, to third and about seven. And you also move yourself out of potential field goal range. Well, Steve Harden's got the... had some communication problems with the Danny O'Neill. This is the third time that he's been a little hasty. Of course, uh, Barnes also jumped the gun as well. Well, it's, it's interesting. The two guys have both done it. You know, it's, it, we, you say Harden, but Barnes was, was off too. Maybe he was reacting to Harden's movement, but both times they've been offside uh, lately has been the left side of the line. Ducks three penalties, 15 yards so far. O'Neill. Lost it down the sidelines to Murphy, who stopped running. Not a very high percentage pass either for the Ducks. They've had a lot of success in the middle, the dumps, and uh, trying the deep pass this time, incomplete. And so what looked like a promising drive, Ken, is stalled because of a penalty and the inability to convert on third down. Thompson has punted one time today, 50 yards. And now his job is to pin the ball deep. A year ago, Thompson 16 times pinned the opposing offense inside the 20-yard line. Greg, Greg Myers, the single safety. It's interesting. The officials holding it up there while Colorado State got a guy on the field. I know that the clock was, was not running, but that's a little unusual. Never rule out a fake. 
The Rams certainly are not. Thompson against the wind, and this might end up being a pretty good one. Ball is caught, tipped, throw it back. They did. And so the Ducks pin the Rams inside the 10-yard line. Now the rule in college football is you mark the ball where originally touched. That was Paul Jensen down there, not where it was down. That way uh, special teams can't just bat the ball around a little bit and pin you a little bit deeper. Good coverage by the, uh, the Ducks there. And one thing, when you see the guy's hand go up for a fair catch, nobody can run with it. You're, you're supposed to look up and find the ball. The Ducks did just that. You know, uh, about a minute and a half to go. The Ducks still have two timeouts on the scoreboard anyway. Uh, they could get a chance to rush a punt. Up to the defense to make a big play. Rams have yet to commit a turnover this afternoon. The Ducks guilty of two, leading to all nine Colorado State points. Double tight ends. Play action pass. Hill, he's looking for the speed burner. This is Turner, and it's almost intercepted by Alex Bolden. Great coverage. Anton, the intended receiver, but you can see Molden right on him. Well, I, I think you see one reason why the Colorado State players have really taken to Sonny Lubeck. Here it is. The last thing you'd expect is to throw deep out of your own end zone, and he's obviously letting his players know, hey, we're going to go after these guys from the Pac-10, and receiver was there just a great job by the defensive back of kind of making up ground while the ball was in the air and keeping it from being caught Molden uh, does does that a lot had a great freshman season Hill is now 4 of 12 for 38 yards now they did the Ducks a favor by stopping the clock now they go back to the option Hill trying to get to the outside has one man out there, Coda, and he doesn't get around him. Stays inbounds, and now Oregon would like to use one of its remaining two timeouts, and they do exactly that. 1.15 remaining. Yeah, Sonny Lubick really rolled the dice there because the incompletion on first down enables Oregon, with its two timeouts, to stop Colorado State on second and third down and force some kind of a punt. But I think, you know, you look at a guy coming in his first year, he wants to throw the football, he wants to instill some confidence in his players, so that's you know, a gamble. He didn't get it this time. But I think it does a lot for his team. Well, it's in the long run. Yeah, the play was well designed, and they had a chance maybe to complete it. Ducks have one more timeout left. Third, third down, uh, Colorado State is one for seven. We'll be back with a final 115 in a moment. Third down and nine for the Rams. 1.15 remaining in the half. Game tied, 9-9. Big play for the Oregon defense. The counter play to Brown, and this one's got a chance. And it's going to be close. And he got a very judicious spot. That'll be a first down Rams, and he'll be able to run out the clock. Judicious. Interesting choice of words. Well, that takes care of the first half for all intents and purposes. The Ducks had a shot at it, but could not stop the Rams. Big play there. Well, that's been the storyline of the first half is all the big plays basically have gone to Colorado State. That's only the second third down conversion, two for eight by the Rams. The other one being on a touchdown play. And Hill, unsure of the formation, calls a timeout. 52 seconds remaining in the half. Well, if you go to halftime, Ken, and you're Colorado State, you have to feel pretty good about things in that you're still in the ball game and your team hasn't made any glaring mistakes. you got to feel ecstatic. First of all, if Oregon has 200 and so yards and 17 points, Colorado is run down. The fact that Oregon has 200 and some yards and is tied 9-9, they are run down. I mean, there's a mental aspect here. We've worked real hard. We don't have a lot to show for our effort. Those guys haven't done anything at all, and they're tied with us. So that's a, a, a mental kind of challenge situation the Ducks are going to have to face. And I, right now, you know, the Rams are on the way to keeping it close. Conversely, if you're Oregon, you have to say, well, we've dominated, and there's no reason to believe we won't dominate the second half as well. If we eliminate the mistakes, we're in pretty good shape. That's right. Well, as, and we alluded to this in the, in the keys. Domination is two parts, physical and mental. Oregon has not dominated mentally, and they really can look in the mirror and see their undoing. A couple of uh, focus and concentration errors, and otherwise they'd be ahead by two touchdowns, I think. Each team with one timeout remaining. 
Hill, and they're going to air it out again. Near side, this is incomplete. Short, underthrown. The intended receiver was Ronald Antoine from Beaumont, Texas. Isaac Walker on the coverage for Oregon. Hill is four for 13. Uh, you know, Sonny Lubeck is showing a lot of uh, confidence in his quarterback, having him throw from off his own goal line. Probably well, feel, you know, they got a chance to throw because the Ducks aren't going to be coming after him. Might be to Oregon's advantage to come after him if they're going to try one more pass. You know, you get into a situation where you might make him make a bad decision. Last year he had three more interceptions than he had touchdowns, so he's, he has made a mental error to himself. There's the counterplay that they used so successfully on third down, and it works again. They go to the short side of the field and pick up eight yards. David Massey to stop. And uh, the clock at 34. The Rams have one timeout remaining. So does Oregon. And I'm a little surprised Oregon isn't using it, but maybe they're just a little tired and want to get into the locker room. And you see Sonny Lubeck says, uh, let's just run it, go into the locker room, tied at the half. And we will not even have another play. So the first half comes to an end. Sonny Lubeck in his Colorado State Rams hanging right in there with the Oregon Ducks. We're tied 9-9. You're watching Oregon Ducks football on Prime Sports Northwest. Ready for the start of the second half. The Ducks with the option to start the second half, and they will receive and defend the north goal. The Rams will boot it away. They will have the wind at their back in the third quarter. As you look at Danny O'Neill with a good solid first half, 11 of 18, 147 yards, was sacked once. And he also scampered once for 11, uh, 10 yards. Well, the Oregon offense really tailed off in the second quarter there. At one point, they had converted three of three on third down conversions. They're now 0 for their last eight. We might look to that early to see uh, if the Ducks are able to recapture that focus that they started the game with. So you look at the deep people, Sean Burwell. And a young man you're going to hear a lot of in uh, years to come, and even this year, is Dino Filia to the far side of the screen. And uh, one of them has to return it. But uh, to do that, they'd have to catch it off the post. We have not had a returned kickoff today. One, excuse me. One that was into the wind, wasn't it? Yeah, what a, yeah and that's, that shows how strong the wind is today. Well, and the Ducks made sure it wasn't returned very long as uh, three guys stoned the receiver on the 18-yard line. So there have really been no returns. No real returns. So O'Neill comes in. Oregon offense controlled the first quarter of play. It, they would like to reestablish that control. They had a nice blend of the pass and the run. Shedrick, a surprising weapon in the receiving department. Burwell, the leading rusher, with 47 yards today. Colorado State with a six-man line. And they'll go with a counter play. This is Deadweiler. Cuts against the grain and then it's drilled to the turf. You know, you don't want to run those reverses to the middle of the field, do you? Well, it appeared at the snap of the ball that Colorado State was in an outstanding position to defend the play, but Deadweiler did a nice job of cutting back towards the middle, turned a potential loss into a nice gain, second and three. Good block by Barnes there, number 63, making sure the outside uh, defender didn't get Deadweiler. Deadweiler is now cutting inside back to his blockers. And Rich Brooks is going to ask Sean Burwell in the film session, why didn't you hit somebody? O'Neill stumbles, backside pressure. He eludes one, throws it left-handed. That'll be intentional grounding, and that's a bad play, making a bad play worse. Norton and Hodge, the two defensive tackles, apply in the heat. For the left guard, Barnes lost his man, could not get him in time, and O'Neill actually got out of his grasp, but then... You now we talk so much about concentration and focus. There's an example. He's going to be sacked. He's on his way down, and he throws it away. 
Definitely no receiver over in the area. Appears to be what O'Neill is arguing in his case is, hey, there was a guy over there and I was trying to throw it to him, but it didn't look too convincing from up here. <laughs> You be the judge. You see Barnes puts his head down and misses his man to the outside. O'Neill's going to get away from him. Right here, you've just got to tuck the ball away. And, you know, if he, a left-handed throw to Steve Harden is... Not in the playbook. Not in the playbook. So what O'Neill did with that was lose another six yards. And... Nothing doing. Two yards for Burwell, and the Ducks will be three and out to start the third quarter. We talked at the beginning of the game about Colorado State's stated intention of trying to make the game close going into the fourth quarter. They've not allowed a point in seven games in the last, last year in the fourth quarter. The Ducks right now have got to, their main goal has got to be able to keep it close through this quarter so that the fourth quarter they have the advantage of the win and maybe can reassert their dominance. Tommy Thompson had a good first half in the punting department. Average 44 yards a boot. Myers, the single safety at his own 40. Good snap. And a wobbler. Myers will field at his own 49. And he has a hole. And there's a penalty flag. Inside the 40 to the 37 yard line where he's knocked down there. Dameron Ricketts making uh, the initial contact. Excuse Dante Lewis making the initial contact. They wear the same jerseys. And you can see Myers. Well, he makes good decisions back there, and why not? The guy had a GPA of 3.44 and was a first-team all-conference academic selection. See the, the penalty here in the lower part of the screen, right? There's a clip. And here, right here, there's another clip right near lower left. So the officials could take really any one of two calls there. And they will take the second one that we saw and mark the ball back at the 50-yard line. Just inside the 50, mark it at the 49. So the Rams with great field position to start the third quarter. Well, this is an all-whack conference of crew of officials, and there have been times when coaches on the road, Oregon at BYU a couple years ago, have questioned the quality of officiating, but it's been real good so far today. throw on first down. Pressure by Bandison over the middle. Almost intercepted by Molden. It's caught by the Rams. Mark Smith on the deflection. And sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Sherman and Walker made the stop, but that ball could have and maybe should have been intercepted by Molden. Instead, the Rams get a big break. Well, right now, that's the main thrust of Colorado State's game plan is to get the big break. Good pressure by Bannison on the outside. That ball should have been intercepted, but at least wise, you would never expect that someone to catch it on a rebound, and D Duck defensive back was all over that receiver as well. <laughs> That's a one-man sweep. <laughs> That's gonna be a hard one to call. That's one of their better offensive linemen, too, Pat Meyer. Second team all-conference selection a year ago. You know, there, there's a situation where as an official, you, you tell me who moved first. Looked to me like the Oregon uh, nose guard, Malapai, moves first. Well, the quarterback backed out, too. Yeah. The nose yeah, guard should never be right. offside, should he? He's supposed no. to be... He's right got over that the ball. football right in front of him. Now maybe the center double clutched it too. Yeah. But on replay, that's a, a good call by the official. Pass rush. Hill in trouble, and he's going to be hammered down at the 35. And you can pick out four Oregon defenders: David Massey, Bandison, and Gary Williams amongst those in on the tackle. Well, if Bandison looks a little perturbed right now, it's because number 76, Derek Urasek, really had the hammer lock on him. So that's the, I believe, the first sack of the afternoon for Oregon. Watch on the left side here. Urasek has just got a big arm all over Bannison. And that's kind of a giveaway when, when you're in between the quarterback 
and the defensive lineman, and you can't go that direction. You've got to be being held. But a nice job of containing Hill. You don't want to have him scrambling outside. He's done that a couple times today and really hurt Oregon. Second and 21. Hill, the wideout pattern, and a little miscommunication between Hill and his wideout, Antoine. Antoine, or excuse me, Turner. Well, it's interesting. I, you know, I just had the thought that Oregon's defense right now has really not had any big plays from their big play people. Ernest Jones did a real nice job turning in a sweep in the uh, uh, second quarter, but we've not really called his name much. Coda has made a couple of nice plays on running plays, but nobody in the Oregon defense has made a big play to kind of turn this thing around. So it's third and 21. And if the Rams do not convert here or pick up some yardage, it'd be a 50-plus field goal attempt. And McGee has not had a good day kicking the ball. He's missed a couple of field goals and an extra point whistle. And we have some confusion. Might have been a delay a game against Colorado State. So the Rams, with a great opportunity here, they got the ball in midfield, and then on a deflected pass, Ended up with the ball inside the 25, but they've stalled, and the Oregon defense has come up with a big play. Hill really has been ineffective as a thrower. He's only 5 for 15. Most of his big plays have been keeping the ball. Well, Colorado State kind of losing their train of thought. A little confusion on their substitutions as well. They'll send a trip set to the near side here. Turner, the closest to the sidelines, the speed burner. Antoine in the slot, and now they'll put Brown in motion. That'll leave the middle wide open. Hill would possibly run here. Here's a pass that is behind the intended receiver, Antoine. And a lot of people would say, well, if that ball was on target, that would have been a completion, but he had to throw it around a couple of linebackers in there as well. So the Rams will probably be forced into a punting situation now, and the defense for Oregon did a nice job preventing further damage. That's Outstanding. You know, Oregon's still not playing. Doesn't appear to be real emotional, but they certainly have got their mind on business right now. McGee will try to pin it inside the 20, kind of pooches it to the right side. Brown calls fair catch, and the Rams will do it again. Or did they? Did they control that ball? I guess so. They're going to mark it at the three. That ball looked like it was not controlled before one of the Rams went into the end zone. Well, one official was looking to the official on the outside there, and no real definite call. Looked like both officials went to mark the ball instead of watching uh, where it ended up. Yeah. I didn't think he had control when he went into the end zone. I don't think so either, but... That's what they're going to call it, touchback. And there's a good example of the, uh, the head official coming in, talking about it, and getting it straightened away because neither of these two officials are going to call it. See, that ball yeah, is now into the end zone, and he bats it out. That's yeah. a very good call. Good call. but Good the, teamwork by the officials. That's right, and the two officials closest to the ball didn't make the call. I think as a coach, you kind of are frustrated when there's some indecision, but you really like the fact that somebody comes in and takes charge, and as the replay showed... They made the right call. So both teams have had one offensive possession in the second half. Neither team able to put any points on the board. The Rams with one first down. 11 minutes to go. We're tied at 9-9, third quarter. Back to the run. Burwell, no, this is Dino Filia, and he's got speed. He's got legitimate 10-5 speed in the 100 meters. Kenya Ragsdale and Vincent Booker, inside backer and cornerback, converge to make the stop. Coach Bilotti was telling me last night that he felt that uh, Dino was one of the fastest guys they had had on their offense since he had been there. And uh, you're going to see some real quick acceleration as he cuts inside the uh, cornerback there, misses the tackle. Gain of five. Burwell now back into the lineup, and he'll go in motion and become a wide receiver. Delay screen into Burwell. Nice block by, I believe that was Howington or Justin Stark. It was Howington. And that enabled Burwell to get an additional seven yards before the two outside linebackers, Ingram and Schneider, make the tackle. Well, the Ducks have gone to a more traditional two-wide receiver look, but 
putting Burwell in motion like that gives them the same thing as if they had three wide receivers. We're going to see O'Neal make a very definite throw. Excellent job by the up front people. Barnes makes a nice block. Those are the kind of passes that uh, Oregon was completing very well early in the game. You know, the quick one uh, to their backs. Burwell led Oregon in receiving a year ago. 35 receptions and a couple of touchdowns. O'Neal. Fumble. Scramble. Recovered by Colorado State. Third turnover of the day for Oregon. And the second time, Kenya Ransdale, Ragsdale has uh, picked up a loose Oregon fumble. And Oregon is just really hurting themselves with mistakes. Hodge made the initial contact and forced the fumble as O'Neal hung on to it and then dropped it. You're going to see the protection breaks down. Again on the left side, Eric Barnes has been having a hard time today with his man. And you see Justin Stark had a chance and just couldn't quite get there. So the Rams in great field position at the 30-yard line with 9.47 to play third quarter. Peter Shepard split near side here. He's a freshman from St. Louis. And they're going to go to him. This ball is intercepted by Isaac Walker in textbook defensive backfield coverage. Wow, what a play. Isaac Walker, his first career interception. Great job by Walker. As the ball was in the air, it appeared that the receiver had a step on him, but he found the receiver with his body. Once he made a little bit of contact with him in his back, you're going to see him turn up inside, shield the the receiver away from the ball and as you said this is textbook there's no way the receiver can fight through his body and Walker makes the catch what a great you know a tremendous emotional play gets the offense off the hook you know right now the left side of the Oregon offensive line is uh, they're not great not too well they've given up some pass pressure from their side they've jumped offside a couple times in critical situations offense is gonna have to get that straightened away well, it looks like they've also made some changes in the offensive line, and now it's the right side. They can't figure out what the snap count is. Tom Curran has come into the game at the center position, and Heath Howington has moved to left guard as they continue to rotate players. That was Mike DeFonzo, who jumped a little bit early. So now things getting a little sloppy on both sides. about physical no. domination Ken and I sense right now that Colorado State is just playing on an adrenaline and an emotional level that is compensating and overcompensating for Oregon's size advantage that's right and you know you get a chance to jump on a team early you got to seize it this is obviously the kind of thing that happens the longer this game goes on the more that Colorado State believes they can play with the Ducks and right now the Ducks really are flat very flat they don't look like they think they can win Second and 15, O'Neal might be in an audible. And now the left side jumps. And maybe O'Neal is varying his snap count. I don't know what it is, but Oregon's offensive guards and tackles are having a heck of a rough time figuring out when they're supposed to start. Well, you see Howington put his hands out and say, hey, you know, what's going on here? It's obviously frustration. It's not up to us to decide who's wrong there, but he definitely moved out a little bit early. But Ducks are definitely a frustrated you know, and the thing is, Ken, that moments ago they got one of the few emotional plays that they have had in this game, an interception. And yet they turn around instead of taking advantage of that, have come out and put themselves in a big hole. Second and 20. O'Neal, quick slant. This is Corey Murphy. He does it again, and Murphy might have fumbled. Did he hold on or not? Penalty flag goes down late. It could have been a face mask. Andre Strode made the tackle and he might have had a little bit of iron and that would give Oregon a first down. A very simple pass play. The tight end goes to the flat and Murphy comes inside on the slant. I'll tell you, any time that O'Neal gets a chance to set his feet and make a decision, today he's been almost perfect. There's a incidental face mask. On Roy Williams, 
And that'll be a first down for Oregon. Well, you, you just said they had kind of negated their chance to make a big break, but right there that shows you the advantages the Ducks have as wide receiver this year. They've got some guys who can catch the ball and run with it after the catch. Murphy, a real nice job of getting upfield and getting the first down. McLemore split far side with Philly on the slot. The tight end is Josh Wilcox. And we have not gotten any update on any injury to Willie Tate, but he hasn't played much today. Shedrick over the middle. Shedrick rumbles forward for another first down before Ragsdale can trip him up from behind. Well, Wilcox was downfield blocking. It's a good thing that he kind of tripped up because uh, he almost was going to clip somebody. But it, there again, you know, at halftime we said, hey, you know, the Ducks have had some plays that have worked. Let's get back and run them. This is the second time they've run this play, and really, it's the same uh, situation. Guys wide open. Shedrick, watch out, Wilcox. Fall down. Almost a clip. And Shedrick came close to getting a penalty for celebration, and maybe we'll detail that in a moment after this play. There's a new rule in college football. They give to Shedrick on a trap, and he's got some more daylight. Pick those feet up inside the 50 to the 45-yard line. Kareem Ingram, number 98, tripped him up. And let's talk about celebrations, Ken. A new rule this year, individual players are not allowed to celebrate in a manner that is excessive, prolonged, or contrived. Those are the specific words used. But you are allowed to celebrate with your teammates. Uh, right there, it looked to me like he was trying to fire his guys up. Uh, I don't know. Fun might break out. they got to penalize that. O'Neal, backside pressure. Danny O'Neill goes down again. Oregon offensive line having a rough time pass protecting this afternoon on anything other than three or five step drops. Steve Hodge gets the sack. So now it'll be third down and two. Well, O'Neill stepped up and, you know, sometimes you gotta take a sack. Colorado State's got some good people up front. So O'Neill is the injured player. And because the trainers have come out, he will have to miss at least one play, and that means the redshirt freshman Tony Graziani from Modesto, California, will come into the game. Let's see what happens. Here again, there's pressure coming from the left side. Hard to say what happened. He looked maybe just got a couple of helmets to to his helmet. Danny has been bothered by an ankle injury in the fall camp. Don't know if he re-injured that or he just got his bell rung. But he must come out for one play if he has been attended to by a trainer. Actually, if you call a timeout. You, or a timeout. You, right. If you, if you call a timeout, you can leave him in there. Evidently, they have not charged the Ducks with a timeout, so he's got to come out. Mike Bellotti has got a lot of confidence in Graziani and feels the Ducks' best backup quarterback they've had since... Uh, And he's going to throw on third down. A little out pattern. Caught right on the money to Burwell. Wow. That's a lot of gumption there by Graziani and a lot of confidence in the offensive coordinator, Mike Bellotti and Graziani. A key third down pass. And the Ducks uh, need to keep this drive alive. O'Neill comes back in. Graziani is now one for one in his Oregon career. And what I like here is the Oregon Ducks have chosen to run a play that uh, Colorado State has yet to stop. The back out of the backfield. Remember what's working for you and go back to it. Graziani just, hey, he looked like a pro there. So, first down and the drive continues. Remember, the Ducks at one time during this drive were back on their own 10-yard line. O'Neal. Philly odd, nothing doing. Good job by the defense there. 6-14 to play third quarter. We're tied at 9-9. Kareem Ingram made the stop on Dino Philly. Ingram has been all over the field for... Colorado State. He and between he and Steve Norton, they've got two really fine players up front. Hodges had a big game as well. Well, it's interesting. You know, Colorado State gave up over 400 yards a game last year and 27 points, but at fourth quarter, again, let's remember that uh, they have not given up a point in the last seven games in the fourth quarter. O'Neal to throw. Down over the middle. This is Malapai. And Malapai is a little short of the first down. Ingram trailing with the tackle. And it'll be a third down and two. Does that play look familiar? I think we've seen that a few times. That's right. We've seen it three times, and all three times it's been complete. It's a high percentage pass. Takes advantage of the fact that Colorado State is having to move their linebackers out and deep to defend the formation. 
And those are the kind, you know, those kind of passes are easy decisions for the quarter. You know, it's a bam, bam play. Gets everyone a chance to get off and run it. 200 yards passing on the day for Danny O'Neill. Tight formation, third and about two. It's a gift to Burwell. He's got the great block and is in a foot race to the corner with Myers. Shedrick with the key block. Burwell with the first down before tackled by Greg Myers. Juan Shedrick is probably one of the best blocking running backs in college football. You're going to see, how'd you like to be the corner out here on the left side and stop this guy? Boom! He explodes him out there. And a nice job by the pursuit. Greg Myers gets over there. And as a sophomore, uh, not only can he uh, intercept passes, he's a pretty good run defender. Like we said at the beginning of the show, reminds you a lot of the Ducks' Eric Castle. The excellent athlete who's always around the football. Burwell with 62 yards rushing this afternoon on 15 carries. A very impressive drive by the Ducks. O'Neill dumps it. And that is an incomplete pass, not a fumble. Almost a lateral. That yeah. ball, and I think the official is marking it. Well, the referee was definitely giving it a long look, but that ball almost went sideways, you know, laterally. And though it, the quarterback intends a pass, if it's lateral, it's a lateral. And, it, you know, the ball's laying out there, and the guy can pick it up. So now the okay. ball marked at the 13-yard line. You see O'Neal was behind the yard stripe. And the ball lands. I believe it landed right on the stripe. Whoa. It's close. Close enough for an official to miss. Anil into the end zone. Has a man. Detweiler. This time he holds on for the touchdown. I'll tell you, great job. Of Danny O'Neill looking to his right and influencing the safety to allow, him, allow Detweiler to get in behind the other safety nobody could react in time that's a great job by the quarterback of looking to his right for a long time and then allowing Deadweiler to find an open space and then putting the ball there and that's a great job of getting up and getting your feet down before you go out of bounds so Deadweiler the man who dropped a punt that led to the first field goal for Colorado State redeems himself with the 13 yard touchdown reception definitely a redemption catch Ryan Perry Smith will hold as Thompson attempts the extra point. And this one is good. So Tommy Thompson with 10 points today. And Oregon, for the first time, has a seven point lead. It's 16 to 9, 418 to play in the third quarter. Well, the Oregon Ducks finally get a touchdown after being inside the 25 three other occasions. This time they punch it in. Danny O'Neill with the 13-yard touchdown pass to Derek Deadweiler. And Oregon leads 16-9. That was a great drive by the Ducks. 11 plays, 80 yards. Actually went 90 yards because of uh, two penalties to start the drive. Thompson's kick is very, very high. It's fielded at the goal line. to the 25-yard line. Mitch Signer, young man from Crane, Oregon. Played eight-man football, made the stop. So now the defense, with the lead, has come up with a big play with the interception by Isaac Walker, the previous drive. The offense then turned it around and went 80 yards in five minutes and 21 seconds. Well, it's impressive. The only guy really beating his chest out there was Juan Chedrick. The rest of the guys just kind of hung in there and just started to get it going. Big series for the uh, Rams. Little trap play up the middle, and Brown runs right into big number 97, Romeo Bandison, a gain of two. Gary Williams also helping out. Well, that drive, you would think, by Oregon, had to take a lot of, of the wind out of that Colorado State defense. First of all, they have a size disadvantage, but to be on the field for that long really wears on you. Well, that's right, and now they're faced with the fact they only have 340 left with the with wind, the wind yeah. and uh, whether they've given up a point or not in the fourth quarter, to do it against the wind today against the Pac-10 defense uh, might be more than they're able to muster. They're giving a little handoff. 
off on the right side for Brown and a face mask. Gary Williams had the big paw in there, but he had too much metal. Hill is 5 out of 17 for 63 yards, so he has not had a good day throwing the football. See right there, Williams got the side of the face mask, and that'll cost him 5. Take it back. They're going to call it 15. Now, really not a great deal of difference between that face mask and the one on Corey Murphy. But it's a judgment call by the officials. It's designed to, you know, obviously keep guys from trying to tackle. And in situations like that, you know, a guy's got his hands out. He's trying to get his hands on the, the runner, and his hand gets caught in the face mask. And that's a big play for... Colorado State. An announced crowd of just under 22,000 here today, 21,721. They said they were going to have 22,000, and they were right about on that. Hill, now he's faced with pressure. Nice release pass there, but the tight end, Mark Smith, couldn't hold it. Chad Coda coming hard, forced the quick pass by Hill. Good pressure by Coda. Slaps him on the back hill and says, hey, try it again. I'm going to get you next time. You know, this is an example of why I think probably Pac-10 teams are reluctant to play WAC conference teams at home. I mean, the athletic director could say, hey, we could play you guys twice in Eugene and get 35,000 both ways. Uh, the payday is not quite uh, the same. Brown becomes a fourth wide receiver. Quarterback draw by Hill. And he stopped short of the first down. Slipped at the 50-yard line. Ernest Jones, David Massey were right there. So it'll be third down and a long three. Hill is lucky that he had to take off and run because had he stayed back there to pass, you're going to see pressure come from the left side. Ernest Jones just goes roaring by his guy. He, he had sack in the back of his mind. Hill turned it into a positive play. Big third down situation. Two for eight, Colorado State. Turner's uh, split to the near side. Antoine far side. And a double tight end look. Here's the rollout again that they really have liked. That pass was low. Well, the first time, Smith just couldn't hold on. This time, that ball was thrown low by Hill. And so the Rams will be forced to punt. Well, credit that incompletion to really good pressure by the Ducks. They are not getting to Hill, but they're forcing him to throw the ball before he wants to. You can see the pressure here. He's got to unload it before he can get his feet turned and squared up field. Nice effort by the Colorado State receiver, Mark Smith. Well, in a great day for Mike McGee in the punting department. He's punted five times. He's averaged 52 and a half yards a punt, including a 79 yarder. This one with the wind will sail near the goal line and bounce in. So a good punt, but maybe a little bit too good for McGee. That's a 50-yard boot, 30 yards net. And when we come back, Oregon will have the football and the lead. Two minutes remaining in the third quarter. Oregon leading by seven with the football. Burwell to the outside, puts his head down and gets four tough yards. Andre Strode made the tackle. Good job by Shedrick there of blocking the first man who showed up, and then Barnes turned up inside. Really kind of they changed blocking assignments. Coaches Terry Donahue and Keith Gilbertson square off in there in 1993 season opener as the UCLA Bruins host the California Golden Bears. You can catch the action Wednesday at 4 p.m. here on Prime Sports Northwest. Your place to be for college football in 1993. Second down, O'Neal, little slip screen to Burwell. Does a nice job just to hold on and then takes a punishing blow from Schneider after a gain of maybe one. This is a key series in the game, I would think, Ken. Another dominating drive by Oregon, and Colorado State might not have enough uh, left in the arsenal. Right, a real key right here is to either get the first down or use up enough time that Tommy doesn't have to kick against the win. Good point. Uh, incompleted pass would stop the clock a running play or a completed pass and they'd be into the next quarter 
Burwell, once again in motion. Let's see if they go to that pass to the back coming out of the backfield. Nope, they go to Josh Wilcox, and this time Wilcox puts his head down and rumbles forward to the 40, and a first down for Oregon after a gain of 14. Roy Williams and Ragsdale made the hit. That's really the same pass that they have been completing. It's just that the tight end and back exchange assignment. The back goes out in the flat, and the tight end comes up the scene. It's really the same, you know, the same play, but with a different look, and an excellent call. The Ducks have, have run that play, or that form of that play, five times. Everyone has been successful. Key first down, 23 seconds on a running clock to go in the quarter. Dino Filia trying to pick his way, and uh, no luck whatsoever. Ragsdale again. In a 4-3 alignment, the inside linebacker is supposed to make a lot of tackles, and Ragsdale has lived up to that billing today. Well, the job of the people up front are to, you know, somewhere along the line, you've got to try to get somebody to double-team you so that you keep the middle linebacker free. Here's the situation where he is free, and he comes up and makes the tackle. Colorado State has some really solid physical defensive players. And that is the final play of the third quarter. We've got 15 minutes to play from Fort Collins, Colorado. It's the Ducks 16 and the Rams 9. This is Oregon Ducks football on Prime Sports Northwest. Go with the reverse, and this is going nowhere. Great stop behind the line of scrimmage for Colorado State, and making the stop is number 47, Jim Derrick. Dederick, excuse me, Dederick, 47. Haven't called his number too much today. He's a reserve linebacker. It's the same play the Ducks ran earlier to pretty good advantage, seven yards, but in this case, Deadweiler could not cut back inside the block of Mike Defonso because there were two other interior defenders there, and you know, as a coach, you call that, you try to slow down pursuit and so on, but it's put the Ducks in a long yardage situation. Third and 14, O'Neill, 18 of 26 this afternoon. The Ducks, 6 of 12 on third down. O'Neill's going to air it out, intended for Murphy, and just overthrown. Some contact, but the ball was not catchable by Murphy. First time today, the Ducks have gone long down the middle. Vincent Booker, step for step with Corey Murphy. A lot of... Good coverage by the Rams. You see a lot of Oregon players come taking their helmets off immediately upon they start heading off the field. That's a sign it's hot down there. Conditioning will definitely be a factor here. Thompson with his fourth punt of the afternoon. He's averaged just over 40 yards in effort the first three. I don't think he's punted with the wind yet, though, has he? No. So this one is uh, marked at the 36. The Rams may have the block on. Look out. And Thompson with a low spiral that Myers fields at his own 14. Eludes three ducks and gets it out to the 25-yard line. Almost a late hit there. Mm -hmm. You never should go into a pile with your head down. Whether it's late or not, the official will... Mark Sliman, reserve defensive lineman, made the stop for Oregon. And so now the Rams have the football under 14 minutes to play and you know i guess if the theory is to hang around in the fourth quarter they've done that well, they're only down seven that's right now fourth corner you know thompson had a couple punts blocked last year but two other games texas tech oregon state he had punts that were going to be blocked late in the game but he ended up uh freelancing and getting out of the situation colorado state has probably seen that here comes the option. Hill will keep it, have to cut it back in, and there's not much daylight right there. That was the same play that they ran for the touchdown, only to the other side. Troy Bailey in there as Oregon continues to shuffle defensive linemen. DJ Cabrera also in there as some of the number one guys like Malapai and Williams get a little breather. Well, it's an interesting concept for an option because it, it really isn't. It's just a quarterback sweep because there's nobody there to pitch the ball to. Colorado State counting on the fact that their receivers and the, the, hey, honey. the back in motion are going to hey. take out defenders and feet, okay. allow their quarterback to go one-on-one -on -one with somebody uh, not as quick as him. Second and eight. 
Hill, quick dump pass to the tight end, and this time Smith holds on and has a first down. Jeff Sherman, the free safety, hauled him down, but not before Mark Smith at 6'6", 230 pounds, a three-year letterman, makes the reception and gives Colorado State a first down. You know, you know, at this stage of the game, Ken, the coaches have seen just about everything from the other offenses and defenses, haven't they? And now it's a matter of making adjustments. Well, yes, and, and you've seen the Ducks have made some adjustments. They're starting to go back to things that have worked for them. But there's a situation where Hill had a chance to have his feet set, threw the ball right on the money. The quick passing game is really his forte. Counter play to Brown over the left side. Gets maybe two yards to the 40-yard line. Troy Bailey and Bandison along with Asher. But I think the thing that Colorado State has going against them right now is they've got a quarterback who's completed one pass in his last, uh, oh, about 10 attempts. And, you know, they, they're, they're not getting, they've had a couple big plays, but not a lot of them. they they got to still hope that Oregon's going to mess it up, you know, make a, a turnover. They've had three so far. Two have led to the nine points that Colorado State has. Approaching the 12-minute mark in this game, the season opener. Next week, the Ducks will open at the home portion of their schedule. There's the out pattern. It is incomplete and closing quickly as Isaac Walker, as Antoine, unable to haul it in with the one hand. I think that was a clear case example that Hill isn't the pure passing quarterback that Sonny Lubick's going to want for his offense. Well, it also shows why you want your fastest people on the outside on defense, because had a slower corner been there, he might have been able to get the ball. Walker really closed as that ball was thrown and was able to knock it incomplete as the receiver was trying to bring in the bobbled pass. Third down. The Ducks have not been able to get to Hill very often in a pass rush rushing situation. This time, heat up the middle, Hill to the outside, and he's not going to get the first down. David Massey acting as kind of a spy in the middle there. But he made the tackle at the 43, and the Rams will have to give it up. What Colorado State wants by putting that man in motion is get the linebacker to totally commit. Now, Massey moved over a little bit, but you could say that he was still eyeing that area inside. I heard uh, through the field mic there people yelling, watch the draw. Good job of defense. You know, and that's the right thing to do if you're Colorado State. He's your big play guy right now. Brian Brown at his own 15, getting ready to return the punt. And McGee against the win, another high spiral. Brown calling for a fair catch and makes it at the 20-yard line. So Oregon with 11.15 to play, comes back out onto the field offensively, trying to put together a long drive to put this one away. Well, if there was ever a time to really knuckle down and concentrate this is it a long drive whether it gets points or not would would have a lot to do with setting up a potential win Colorado State right now has got to be thinking hey we got to take some chances we're way down at their end we're running out of time our offense is not sustaining anything fullback Shedrick and he gets maybe a yard at best Schneider and Ragsdale converging Shedrick's had a good afternoon, three or four receptions, and a nice job of blocking. But Oregon has not been able to consistently establish a running game. They've had a couple of spurts here and there. Burwell's been the number one rusher over 60 yards today. But it's basically been the arm of Danny O'Neill this afternoon that has moved the ball offensively. And a lot of the big plays have, outside the touchdown have come from back throws to the tight end and to the back. O'Neal throws it deep and out of bounds, intended for Kristen McLemore. Well, he wanted to throw it to Shedrick there, but somebody came off a block and got in the way, and he showed good, good decision throwing the ball away there, but it stops the clock, which helps Colorado State. Well, the Ducks have turned it over three times this afternoon. Two of those turnovers resulted in points for Colorado State. And the one turnover for Colorado State, an interception, ended up resulting in an Oregon drive for the go-ahead score. O'Neill, the wide-out throw, and 
This can't play throw and catch with McLemore, and the Ducks will have to boot it away. So three and out for the Oregon offense. And Tommy Thompson will have to come in and try to do it once again. Well, again, the, no time really off the clock. The Ducks right now, with the wind at their back, whether you, as I said, whether you get points or not, you want to grind that clock down a little bit. Colorado State came close to Tommy Thompson on the last punt. It'd be interesting to see what their strategy will be here. And Myers is a dangerous return man. He's got great speed, 4-4. Four, four. Today's average just under 11 yards of return, just about what he averaged a year ago. Good snap, and the protection is excellent. Thompson with a spiral that sends Myers back to the 28. We have a penalty flag, and this one will probably come back. You can see what Myers can do. He is certainly exciting. But this is the second time this afternoon he's made a nice return, only to have it nullified by a clip or an illegal block. Byron Rockwell made the tackle. Well, a Asher got clipped there, and... Really, he was, you know, had the blocker known where the receiver was going, he, would, he wouldn't even have tried to make the block. Number 44, if you get a chance to see it. Now, there's a questionable block right there. Hands on the back. You look on the left side, right. Yeah, we already... I think that was the one. Yeah. Well, that first one was yeah. definitely hands on the back, too, and that's a no-no. So the officials missed that and caught the second one. Instead of having the ball at the 45, the Rams have to start at the 22. 10.08 to play. Ducks. Oregon leading 16 to 9. Ducks have yet to get a turnover. This would be a good place for one. They have the one interception, but no fumble recovery. Brown, and they've done a really good job on Brown today. He has had almost no daylight at all to run to. Chad Cota came up with the ball late. Dante Lewis also in there, and Herman, or uh, Dante Lewis, I should say, in there, number five. And Jeremy Asher. Boy, how many times have we called his name this afternoon? That's right. We don't want to discount the uh, the interception of Walker. That was a big play at the yeah. time. The Ducks didn't really capitalize on it, but it kept that game from getting out of hand. Coda is a really an outstanding football player. He can run. He loves to hit. And remember last year, he played virtually the entire season with a broken thumb. It really reduced his ability to make big plays. We have some early movement there. The ball is up. We've got one penalty flag down for sure. They're going to call the outside receiver for blocking downfield while the ball was in the air. The running back went in motion. Nobody covered him. The Hill saw that and threw it to him. That'll be a penalty against the Rams. But that's okay to block downfield if the ball is completed behind the line of scrimmage. But in that case, the ball was downfield. A reminder to join Bud Namick and Dina Napoli as they preview this year's Washington State football team on the Crimson and the Gray, a half-hour program dedicated to Cougar sports. Tomorrow night, beginning at 10.30 here on Prime Sports Northwest. So the penalty will go against Colorado State, mark it off five yards. Paul Turner was the guilty party there, blocking downfield. True freshman from San Diego. Ducks actually lucky, though, because that running back was uncovered out there. This might be intercepted. Oh, no, it's caught by Turner. And Dante Lewis saw that one coming, and uh, Turner managed to catch it and get to the turf before the two fives collided. Hard to tell whether he had a, a bead on the ball or the man, because right at the last second, uh, it's almost like he was caught by surprise. Nice catch. This is potentially, a, if that ball had not been thrown low like that, I think, yeah, that's what happened. The ball was thrown low enough that Dante didn't really get a clear shot at him. That would have been an interesting collision. Oh, I tell you, Lewis can put it on you. Third and seven. They come with a counter play to Brown. And nothing doing. They try to cross the Ducks up. Remember, at the end of the second quarter, with the Ducks trying defensively to get the ball back deep in Colorado State territory on a key third down play, they ran that same play, that little counter tray. Rockwell made the stop, 
and the Rams forced to punt it away. Actually, you know, outside of the fact that it was third and long, it was a pretty well executed play, but Tomo Piao got really collapsed down inside, but a nice job by the interior linebackers of Oregon staying free, and once the man had to turn up field, nowhere to run. So McGee having a great day this afternoon. This one a long spiral. Brown will receive it at the 30. The ball is it loose. The officials looking for the football. What happened? The side judge doesn't kind of confuse. Penalty flag down. And we'll see who this one's against. Looks like Oregon maintains possession of the football. Still no indication. 7-17 to play. Here's your illegal block. And you can see John Tomo Payao being attended to. Looks like he'll be okay. So the penalty against Oregon. Mark it off 10 yards. They'll start at the 22. It's somewhere along the line where you see your man is going to be tackled, you got to stop blocking. And, you know, that having the ball on your 22 as opposed to the uh, 35 is a big difference. See if you can see the infraction. It's going to happen right over by the line. The, there it is. Hands on the back. Didn't look like much, but that's definitely illegal and really poor judgment. Neither team has scored here in the fourth quarter. The only points of the second half, a touchdown pass by O'Neal to Deadweiler. And O'Neal just throws this one away. Went for the bomb to Kristen McLemore. Good coverage. O'Neal took a hit as he threw it as well. Andre Strode, the coverage on McLemore. Well, and Rich Brooks is shaking his head right now. He's probably saying, you know, we've got the seven minutes to go. Let's... Let's not stop the clock for these guys. You know, three first downs here would eat up about six minutes. Chance of trying to put more points. You know, that's a hard thing to resist, getting greedy. There's really not been a lot of evidence that the deep man's going to be open. O'Neal throws it to McLemore, kind of wounded duck, but McLemore retrieves the ball and comes up a little bit short of the first down. Ragsdale made the stop. And McLemore coming up a little slow as well. That's his first reception. Well, it's a good thing that McLemore was that open. You're going to see this ball. Yeah. Is O'Neal's not in great position to throw it. It's fluttering. And McLemore has to understand he's got to get upfield. And he did the best he could. And came up just about a half a yard shy. Now, this is a big play for Colorado State. Last time the Ducks went to a power play with Burwell carrying... Shedrick the lead block. This time it's O'Neal on the keeper, and it appears that he has the first down. And that's probably, that's exactly what you should try to do. You've got that big size advantage inside with your center and guard. Two situations that Oregon has chosen to do that. They've gotten two yards. So that keeps the drive alive, keeps the clock rolling. 6.20 left to play fourth quarter. Sure, that was a that was a two and a half minute play right there. Getting the, the difference between getting the first down and not getting the first down. They'll at least be able to run off another two and a half minutes. Slight stoppage uh, in the clock as they warn, I believe it was Colorado State, move off the sideline area a little bit. They've got a white stripe that uh, runs from 25 to 25, an area where only officials should be in and so forth. We used to see that signal at fraternity parties, didn't we? Didn't mean get off the sideline. <laughs> Deadweiler in motion. Fake the reverse. O'Neal didn't fake anybody. Robert Marceau made the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Another sack for Colorado State. That's five sacks and well, that's not a good start if uh, one of your areas of concern last year was protecting the quarterback. Well, I, I think I know what they're trying to do. And had Deadweiler been able to get out of the backfield, he was going to be wide open. But play like that just takes a long time to develop. And the Ducks 
You know, you, you want to try to stay in positive yardage situation. That's See that? Five sacks. And it was Oregon that was supposed to have the big pass rushers. Here comes the blitz. O'Neal, perfect call. Burwell, and he's got all day to run. He's got more than all day. Big, big play of the ball game. Strode and Williams prevent the touchdown, but perfectly executed play, perfect call against the defense. And, and a nice job of O'Neal getting the ball off before the rush got to him. I was watching Burwell on the play, and it looks to me like he misses his block, but the reason he does is he's got to get out in the screen, and O'Neal does a nice job. You know, he stayed in his back pedal to buy himself a little bit of time, and it's wide open. The linebacker responsible for covering Burwell got caught up inside. And right now, you'd like for some of those blockers to get in the screen. Burwell with six receptions for 82 yards this afternoon. None bigger than that. O'Neal will continue to throw. Looks over the middle. He's got a man. Touchdown, Christian McLemore. McLemore's second career touchdown in the Ducks extend their lead at the most appropriate time. That's just like a basketball game when some guy's out at 40 feet, you're going, no, 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 and as the ball goes in, you go, yes! Obviously a great call because it was a touchdown. Well, and also at a time where with the clock rolling down, Colorado State was in a defense to deny the run, and the play action pass uh, was simply sensational, and for O'Neal, the second time in his career and for the second consecutive season opener, over 300 yard passing now 307 well the other thing is the ducks had advantage of field position they were in four down territory you know they figure at the least they got a shot at fourth down and getting a field goal so why not go for it and for the first time in eight games colorado state has given up points in the fourth quarter this time it might be the capping points for an oregon win 435 to play and the ducks leading by 14. There you see it, the touchdown that puts it away. Colorado State uh, then comes back and uh, tries to maybe cross the Ducks up with a running play, but uh, no fool in there. Chad Cota played a, a very fine football game, as did most of the turners. We've got a fresh group of defensive linemen. Bryant Jackson, call him BJ. Call him Makes trouble. The sack, trouble. He is strong, very physical. You can see he's getting shoved in the face mask here. Comes off and gets the sack. Uh, Mark Sliman in there as well. Uh, Bryant Jackson is a redshirt freshman, 290 pounder, and he bench presses over 400 pounds. Another nice play by number one, Alex Molden. You mentioned Mark Sliman. Well, he'll get his name in the old stats right there. I thought that was a fumble. That coach. was a fumble. And, and remember, you can return that behind yeah. the line of scrimmage this and year. And we had, and DJ Cabrera's picking it up. You can see the ball's out right there. It's coming out. He's not down. DJ's got it, he scooped it, he's gone, touchdown, Ducks, no luck. Just a sack and a loss of seven, unfortunately. And then Hill, pass, and Alex almost got that one too. Almost did. Playing a little bit uh, deeper, we don't want to give up anything deep here. And here, uh, we uh, try to let Tommy kick a 61-yarder. Distance is there, but he hooked it a little left. He made a 60, what, two-yarder in the, in the, the practice, practice on the Friday. day before, and yes. I think he hit the post from 67, so yes. it was certainly not out of his range. Anyway, that's the final score, 23-9. to nine. The Ducks pick up the victory over Colorado State, a good opening day win. Let's take a look at some of the final statistics. First of all, the team statistics, and you can see Oregon dominating in the first downs and the passing yardage, a big discrepancy there. Danny O'Neill throwing for over 300 yards for the second consecutive opening day. Total offense just under 400, just over 200 for CSU. Turnovers, it's rare to win on the road when you're minus two in the turnover department, but Oregon did. The punting department, you know, you mentioned that Tommy hadn't practiced much, but he averaged 44 yards and had a nice one inside the 20 as well. Third down conversion, a good percentage there in the, the defense once again, that's what, the 20, percent for CSU defensively uh, on their third down conversions. Danny O'Neill, nice numbers there, 21 at 33, 307 yards, two touchdowns, and Sean Burwell led the way in the rushing department. Tackles, 
Well, CSU only had 59 snaps, so yeah. you're not going to get many guys in double digits, but Chad Cota, number seven, David Massey, and Alex Molden leading the way. After the game, we went into the locker room, and our Pat McGilvery got these comments from the players. Mistakes, you know, too many mistakes. You can't be fumbling the ball on the 10, and uh, I, I made a couple mistakes. Uh, shouldn't take some sacks when, and some big plays. So uh, just a, a few mental mistakes, but I think it's to, to be expected the first uh, game anyways, but uh, we need to overcome those for the for Pac-10. Came in, we had a rookie snapper and a, a new holder, and uh, wasn't sure how things were going to go, but they did a heck of a job today, you know, and, uh, you know, we got things done. That, uh, that last field goal, I'm a little disappointed in myself, you know, um, had the distance, but just hooked it a little bit. I mean, it was my first, you know, Willie went down, and I was, you know, my first half ever, this is my first game ever in college football, and, uh, you know, after after I loosened up, my second half was a lot better, and, you know, I started clicking, and it, it felt more comfortable to me. Our offense didn't play bad. They just had some mistakes, I thought. They moved the ball well, and they came through at the end for us, you know. But, yeah, we, we played well. We're happy as a defense. I mean, anytime you can hold a team to single digits, you got to be happy. Well, what happened was the DB, the safety, cheated, and he, he got caught doing it. And I just went over him. He took his eyes off me for a second, and Danny seen that. And I just sat in the back of the end zone. Then all of a sudden, I seen a floating ball coming to me, and it was just... I didn't even think, I, actually, I didn't even think about the ball coming to me. I was just thinking about getting up there and getting it. And then when I got it, I just pulled it down, tucked it in, and said, just let me fall down and just be happy. And then that's what happened. The offense, you know, picked it up the whole second half. The whole, for a whole half an hour, they played Smash Mouth. And that's what it's all about. And they picked it up. Unfortunately, we had some adversity, but we, 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 we came through it, and everything was okay. So. Yeah, you lost Herman right away. Yeah. That hurt us a lot, but you know, but we got a great secondary. We've got a, long, a lot of young talent, and uh, guys just stepped up, you know, guys stepped up all day. I guess the touchdown pass was called, it was a play action pass, and I was lined up in, in a, like a left twin, and I uh, was supposed to be off the ball. See, I, didn't, I don't play that position too often, and I saw, I, you know, I jumped back, thank God, in time, get off the ball. Saw the safety, Corey was coming on a cutback. I saw the safety start to bite, and I was supposed to do a deep curl. I looked, I saw Danny, you know, kind of look back and look at me, so I just took it up in between them. Kind of a, you know, it was a messed up play on my part, but I just took, did what the best I could and got six points for us. Well, messed up play, but six points, you'll take that, huh? You don't need to draw those up, huh? No, uh, you know, we adjust a lot of routes. That one... Uh was adjusted on the run, so to speak, but a uh, real nice play by Kristen recognizing that change in the coverage and Danny picking it up and throwing it in her for the six points. All right, so Oregon gets the victory 23-9 to over Colorado State when we come back.